So today I'm going to be doing a Netflix and a Leap with Popper Tron. Um, Popper Tron is a net that has kind of had its ups and downs, and I think that there's a lot to talk about when it comes to net building and kind of theory, because I think this net is a net that's kind of fallen off in the format. I don't think it's unplayable by any means, but it's not where it used to be. So, this net set is going to be kind of a longer one, so if that's not your um, routine, you can skip to the gameplay. But there's a lot I'm going to be talking about in this net set, and hopefully it will be of some value to those who want to listen to it. Alright, so first things first, um, let's talk about Flickertron. So, Flickertron historically has been one of the better nets, if not the best bet in Popper, at various points in time. I would say that post Mr. Sanctuary Man, uh, it was the best net in the format. Not even close. Um, Hards like Bonder's Ornament and Prophetic Prism, along with Ephemerate, made the net have an unbeatable endgame, like no other net would compete with that. And it also has had crazy mana, and it would play all the best cards. So, during that time period, I think that it was the best net. Not remotely close. I think maybe you could argue that it fell off a little bit, right before Modern Horizons 2 got released, but it was still definitely competing among some of the top nets in the format during that time period, and I think that post Modern Horizons 2, so many things changed that, you know, I think it was just an entirely different format post, post Modern Horizons 2. Pop was never the same. Uh, and also we got the banning of Prophetic Prism and Bonder's Ornament, both of which really hurt the Tron net. Tron, I think, was unplayable when they banned those cards, and later on, they did unban Expedition Map, which in my opinion should have never been banned, it made no sense. But they did unban it, but that didn't do enough to help Tron. I think Tron was still unplayable post map unban, and I think the card that really saved it was Energy Refractor. If this card was never printed, Tron would not be playable. It would not be in the format anymore, like at all. Um, Tron really needs these kind of mana rocks that not only hand trip but filter colors and refractory is the best one in the format right now you need to play at least four uh historically speaking when tron had prophetic prism it was an unplayable net but when it has nothing like that it's just not playable um i would argue that tron is at its best when it has access to eight hand tripping mana rocks um, when we had Artem's Astrolabe and Prophetic Prism, it was very powerful. And when we had Prophetic Prism and Bonder's Ornament, it was also incredibly, incredibly powerful. I think during those two periods of time, Tron was one of, if not the best nets in the format. And when Tron only had Prophetic Prism, it was decent, it was a contender, but I don't think it was in the running for best net. I think when it, when it gets eight copies, it's really good. Now, a lot has happened since then. And I want to kind of talk about that real quick. So, post banning of Prophetic Prism and Bonders Ornament, Tron fell off, saw no play in it at whatsoever. Uh, the unmanned maps were trying to help it, still saw no play. Uh, and then we got Energy Refractor, right? And once we got Energy Refractor, Tron all of a sudden became reasonably playable. Not busted, not tier 1, just playable, right? And I think that's a reasonable argument for it. Um, in the current format, a lot has changed. Uh, we had the addition of cards like the Initiative, Monastery Swiss Mirror, and now all that glitters, right? Um, I think those are some of the big highlights uh, post uh, Modern Horizons 2 and also post Prophetic Prism, Atop, Man, all that, right? Um, I think that once Modern Horizons kind of settled down and they got rid of the whole artifact problem and the storm issue, um, what was left was. Artifact land still being good. Uh, Swiss Beer got into the format, dominated, got banned, and then we got all that glitters, and now we're back to a format where artifacts are probably the best thing to be doing, whether it's playing artifact lands, artifact synergies, um, cards like Deadly Dispute, uh, all that glitters, whatever. Um, you should just be playing artifacts to some degree. I think that uh, it's one of the best things to be doing. Um, you also have nets like Polarian Terror, uh, Familiars, uh, the Guardians net, right? But the format's kind of in a spot right now where I think the best thing is probably um, something artifact-based, but it's not as unhealthy as it has been in the past. So that's kind of the history of the format and how Tron has kind of fit into that history. 
And now I'm going to be talking about um, kind of some of the things that I've noticed when playing Tron and some of the things I'm, you know, some of the net building choices that I have made. So for starters, you need to play for Enter here with Ratner. Uh, not remotely close. Uh, this earning is required. Um, the fact of the matter is that Energy Refractor is very different from Prophetic Prism for a couple of different reasons. The first is that you only need one copy of Energy Refractor. Um, the first one is great, the second one does nothing. It hits a clue token, which is fine, right? Especially when you're Tron. But the point is, is that Prophetic Prism was a card where you wanted all four. Like, the first one was great, the second was awesome, third was great, like, you wanted all of them. Whereas, Energy Refractor, the first one is all you need. But that's a really nice thing, because it means that, like, you're not desperate for as many of this effects as you can find, right? The first one's great, but after that, you're set, right? So, that's a, a pretty big difference, right? Especially, given the fact that we're not allowed to play eight Mana Rocks anymore. So, the fact that, you know, we're only allowed to play four, but the first one is really great, and does pretty much everything we need it to do, is really more than enough. Um. And so, the problem still is the fact that, like, the format has gotten a lot faster, a lot more brutal, and so, Tron can't really afford to be slow, like it used to be. So, in addition to, like, the 4 Energy Refractor, uh, Lorien Revealed, I think is another card you kind of have to play. Not only is it a good hard draw spell in the late game when you have a set of mana, so it prevents you from kind of breaking and drawing blanks, but it's also great at getting your colors online, and also giving you land drops early. So I'm playing 20 lands, which I think might be a little too little, but I think with 4 copies of Lorien Revealed, you essentially have 24 lands, so I think it's okay, but it's definitely a little bit risky. Um, historically, I've played Tron with uh, 22 lands, and 3 copies of Lorien Revealed, which... I think it's probably more what you want to be going for. Um, but regardless, 24, a little bit low, but I think you heard me out, hey. Uh, we'll also talk about why I'm doing that because of the hard range fun. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, in terms of assembling Tron, right, you want to assemble the, the mine, the power plant, and the tower, uh, I'm using crop rotation over expedition map, and this is for a couple of different reasons. So the first is that expedition map is incredibly slow. It costs one mana to play, two mana to activate, and your land drop. That is really, really, really slow. Um, the problem is that if you're going to be doing something like that, you need to then follow it up with like a ridiculous spell. And in formats like Modern, for example, you have really powerful colorless spells that can take over the board, right, and, and clear things up. You don't really have that in Popper. You don't have Oblivion Stone, you don't have Hard Great Creator, you don't have, you know, Uin or Worm Coil or the One Rain. Like, you have none of that. So, like, assembling Tron is oftentimes not going to just be enough, right? You have to assemble Tron and do other things. And we don't have those other things. Like, at the end of the day, we're kind of like a, a, a fall deck, right? A, a lot deck, so to speak, where we just fall until we can lock the opponent out, and then we kill them with Rolling Thunder, right? That's really what we're doing. And that's kind of not as good as it used to be in Popper. And on top of that, like, you know, you can't really afford to be slow, right? Because the format's a lot faster than it used to be. So I'm opting to play Crop Rotation, which I think is a better card than Expedition Map. It does come with the additional risk of the fact that Crop Rotation uh, requires you to set a land as part of its cost, so if it gets countered, you can be in trouble. But I would argue that most of the format is not counterspell based. Like, the only counterspell decks that I can think of are, like, Familiars, the Terror decks, the Jeskai Ephemerate decks, and, like, maybe Fairies, but... Um, those are just not common enough in leaps, and so, you know, I'm fine playing drop rotation. On top of that, like, early on, people are just, you know, tapping out, and so you can just sneak it through, it's not impossible. Um, and so it's just like, you know, you, you can give yourself a window, and, uh, if people are, uh, okay, uh, got a notification. But, uh, if people are aware of that, right, if people are aware of the fact that, like, you might have rotation and they slow themselves down, you're not upset with that either. So, 
realistically, I think reputation is just better, and also you have some, some center here with Bob. But generally speaking, uh, I'm a bigger fan of reputation. So, with all that being said, I think, like, the core of Tron is all here. Like, you have your Tron lands, you have your energy refractors, you have your moment space, you have your impulse, you have your missile teachings, you have your outer spells of choice, and then you have the monet wall and mold Rifter, and then you have your little one of that are your kind of silver bullets for the whatever scenario you're in. And then, for me, what I'm doing is I am playing Brainstorm in Tron. Now, this is kind of weird, but it's something I wanted to try out. So, when I was playing the format, um, I noticed that there were a number of decks playing the Brainstorm Lorian combo, and to me, it felt like whenever they had that synergy, I felt like I'm, I'm in trouble, because it was just that powerful. Um, when I would play certain nets, I would actually go out of my way to, like, proactively counter early brainstorms, because I would have some opponents who, it's like, if you counter their first brainstorm, their hand crumbled, and it didn't function anymore. Uh, and to be fair, like, the interaction between brainstorm and couple effects is nothing new. People are aware of the fact that that is really powerful, right? And so, if you kind of take the brainstorms for a minute, and you kind of, like, pretend they're not part of the net, right? This looks pretty stock. Uh, I would probably add some number of network terminals, maybe, uh, maybe a couple more lands, but other than that, like, I didn't really change all that much. I believe, if I remember correctly, I had uh, a impulsive research, which is technically a win condition, but I found that it didn't come up very often, and on top of that, like, I'm a, if I'm going to replace it with the Lorian reveal, I have another draw effect anyway, so we're, we're roughly even. And then for the brainstorms, I believe I hunt two lands and two network terminals. Now, there is an argument to be made that Brainstorm is kind of acting as, like, a land, which I think is reasonable, right? And, you know, when you play Legacy, cards like Ponder and Brainstorm are, to some degree, part of your mana base, right? As they let you get away with playing fewer lands. And so we're kind of trying that out here. Now, it seems a little weird that I'm only playing four couple effects with Brainstorm, that's not enough, but I would argue I have more than just four. Uh, you have, for starters, Rock Rotation, that's seven. Uh, you have two missile teachings, that's nine. And then you also have impulse, which while it's not actually a shuffle effect, um, it's close enough, right? You can brainstorm and then impulse, and you'll see the two cards you put back, but then you'll see two fresh cards, and you can hopefully take one of those, and then you get a free, a, a brand new draw the following turn. So, it's a way to kind of, you know, heat your hand, um, from, heat yourself from any brainstorm lot. So, the reason why I'm trying Brainstorm is that I know, I feel like the center team between Brainstorm and Lorian is really, really, really powerful, and I think that you should probably be playing that in every deck that you can, and I don't think it's remotely close, like, I think if you're playing a blue deck, you should really be considering the interaction between these two, like, especially when you're playing Silver Bullets, like, sometimes you draw a copy of Breath Weapon, and you're like, this doesn't do anything, and before you had Brainstorm, it was just stuck in your hand, there's not a ton you can do about it. But now, like, you can drop Brainstorm and shuffle it away and get fresh new draws, right? And it's a really potent interaction because, like, sometimes it, you, like... It, it's hard to explain, but I've noticed, like, a lot of decks in the format are not playing this interaction and they're just playing cards like for your name. And it's like, when you draw certain cards that are bad in a matchup, they're just stuck in your hand, right? And you just kind of have to, like, draw through it, which is not the easiest thing to do. And also, like, in a, a format that's as fast as the current one that we're in, can sometimes be a losing proposition. Whereas, like, a hard like Brainstorm, it just lets you, like, draw three, and immediately just get rid of the bad cards, and it's like, you don't have to wait three turns to, like, draw the next three cards. So it's like, it has a little bit of a tempo in it as well. Um, but yeah, I don't know if it's, you know, necessarily you know, make Tron tier one by any means, but I think Tron is already kind of startling in the format, if I'm being honest. Like, I think it's decent, but it's not, like, where it used to be, right? And if you want to make Tron better than what it currently is, which is a net that seems to play by, like, five people, um, you have to start brewing and trying new ideas. And I think the interaction between Brainstorm and Lorian is one that probably should see more play than it already is. Like, there's a number of blue nets in the format that are not playing it, and I think they should be. Uh, I think, like, just the center between these two cards is incredible, and you should, like, just be playing it, like, um, like just by default, I think, like, every blue net should just be on these, like, eight cards, but regardless, like, I think it's great, I think it's a really powerful combo, and 
Uh, you know, I, I for one, um, am going to try it and try I'm trying it in a couple other nets. Uh, I have a Rainbow Fans list here, um, that also played it, and I went 4-1, and it felt great, because, like, you know, this is a 19-land net with Utopia Thrall, and, like, Lorien revealed lets you have a way better mana base than you went before, and it's, it's just great. It's, it's really, really good. It produced a sunscape. I really liked it. Um, I had, like, I, I think I need to work on some of the numbers on the sideboard. It's a little, little wonky, but the center here was great. And, you know, I, I haven't played a ton of popper lately because I haven't played other formats. And so, like, now that I'm kind of back into trying things out in popper, I just felt like the Lorien brainstorm interaction was really under kind of underexplored, like, it's really powerful, right, and obviously Brainstorm and Hell effects are nothing new, but I just feel like more nets should be trying this out, and I feel like there's a number of nets in the format that are not playing it, right, like, I think the nets that I've seen play it are, like, the Solarian Terror nets, which it's an easy, you know, addition to, and, like, the Jessica Knight and Troll net, but I don't see it being played in things like Familiars, and, you know, it's just interesting to me that they're not doing it. Like, may maybe I'm just totally, you know, off course here and off base, and, you know, I, I haven't played the format in a while, so what do I know? But, um, I don't know. It just feels like this is a really good synergy, and I, I want to try it out. So, uh, yeah, with that said, I'm going to quit that tech, because I'm kind of, most of this has been me talking about kind of my theory. But to recap, like, you know, I think that rotation is important. I think the synergy between these teams is really good. And, yeah, I want to give it a go. So, with that being said, let's kind of talk about the choices real quick. So, in terms of the mana base, um, I'm playing Thriving Lands. You can play it Yates, so it really doesn't matter if any of this effect will do. Um, obviously the 12 Crown Lands, two Islands, and then I have a Fjord for some red spells, and a Rhymeworth Falls for some green spells, and then one Bot for crop rotation reasons. Uh, and then for, uh, sort of, uh, Hand tripping and hard selection, we're going to put this entire package over here. We're playing 4 Impulse, we're playing 4 Lorien Revealed, and 4 Brainstorm. Uh, in terms of ways to also get Tron lands, we have Crop Rotation, I'll put that in this package here. For Mana Fixing, we have Energy Refractor. For Ways to Saw, we have Moment Speed, so we also have Wind of the Swarm and Breath Weapon, depending on the matchup. Uh, and then we have Rolling Thunder as a Wind Han. Uh, I want to talk about this real quick. So some people have played Harns like Nimrod the Horror. Uh, I personally am not a huge fan of Nimrod the Horror. I think that Harn is really slow. And it requires that you aren't playing a certain type of strategy. And I also think it like really relies on like a Flitter engine. And it's really weak to Rainyard Hate sometimes. Like people aren't playing Rainyard Hate. So uh, you really kind of want to have a Wind Han that can steer around that. And Rolling Thunder I think is a great right card for that. Um, like, especially in the sideboard games, people will bring in lots of relics, so you kind of want to have a way to, to deal with that. And then, yeah, you have your peach in here. My counter spells are just prohibited. You can play Unwind, but I feel like the card is not great. And then I have Mnemonic Walls and Wolfers, and that's about it. Uh, in terms of the sideboard, my sideboard might need some work. Um, I think, like, the core that I have here is pretty good. So, I have... Uh, Hydro Blast for Burn, and then two Breath Weapons for her, mainly for Burn. I have one of the Swarm, which is also mainly for Burn. Um, I find that with these seven cards, the Burn match is a lot more feasible than it has been prior, but I do think you really need these cards. Uh, for Blue Nets and for Counter Match, I have three Pyro, one Dispel. I used to play four Pyro, but I needed to make room for other things, so, uh, you know, make your choices. And then Dispel is just a nice hat shell. It, it's a little bit more, uh, diverse than Pyro Blast and has more, a little bit more applications, but there are trade offs between the two. Um, I have really common for the Artifact Nets. I also have Ancient Run, which is mainly for Relic and also the Artifact Nets. And then Risk Circle. This card is a little bit weird, but the idea behind it is that in certain matchups, you can play it and just lock the opponent out from ever killing you. Uh, so like some of the Terror Nets, some of the Risk Affinity Nets, uh, things like that. Uh, Fairies, it's really good against them too. Uh, the card, um, uh, what's it called? The, the one five that makes one ones, the Mystic, um... The Murmuring Mistlet, I think it's called. Um, it, it's not right against that, but you also will just heal it with Pyroblast, so it's like, you also have answers. And also you can just wipe the board with Breath Weapon, but like, generally speaking, it is a way to like, prevent people from healing you. It's also pretty decent against Gardens, because it means that like, Hurt Rats doesn't heal you, and none of the creatures heal you, and sometimes it means they can't win anymore, and then they're going to die. So, um, it's, it's just a good way to buy time, and the thing is that like, 
if people are going to be bringing in relics for your fall effects, like, this is a great way to just be like, you know, your, your graveyard hate isn't going to prevent me from falling you out of the game. So that's kind of the use case there. Um, you could play it hard, like maybe, um, Stonehorn Dignitary. You could maybe also play your own Murmuring Mystic. There's lots of different options, but, um, generally speaking, I think this is a fine one for now, but, um, obviously I think Tron is really underexplored, and so, uh, it, it's just one of those decks that I think it's hard to play, and so it disincentivizes people to look into it, which makes sense. And then on top of that, it's like not at its prime, so there's also not an incentive to mess around with it. And so, Prod as like an archetype is really, I think, underexplored in Popper and also underplayed. And it's just like, those two things of mine mean that new ideas are not going to be tried. Um, so yeah, I'm going to say Brainstorm Lorien Revealed is good enough for Tron. And yeah, let's uh, hop into the games. Um, this one's a little sketchy. It's... Kind of slow at assembling Tron, but I think it's still probably worth a keep. It has its issues, but it has two lands, double impulse. Hopefully, we can make this work. Um, if not, then uh, we'll see. So, yeah. If it's a Linner's matchup, I can see this hand fumbling a little bit, but um, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. So, it looks like we're up against Burn, so we're going to hope to um, maybe get some red mana going. Uh, here I'm going to play Energy Refractor because I want to get my red mana down soon. Well, I found red mana. Um, and then yeah, so ideally what will happen here is they will, um, oh yeah, I hope they miss on a land here. Penalta, no land, no land, no land. Um, oh, they have the land. Okay, we're in trouble now. It's learning I'm a really, really wide board. Yeah, so we're probably going to lose game one, but that's, that's the thing, right? The format's gotten really fast, and so Tron, uh, you can see, it, it does start a little bit. Um, but, with that being said, we can find a moment to speak, but you have some ways to kind of stun the bleeding. Here, because of the impulse in the main, it does give away the fact that we're not going to, uh, you know, necessarily have, uh, you know, a, a, a thought effect, but, um, you gotta do what you gotta do. Here, I'm gonna just play a tap land here, and we're probably gonna take a lot of damage. Hopefully, there's no bushwhacker, but if they do have a bushwhacker, we're probably dead. Just because that's gonna deal with so much damage, and, uh, we're not really gonna be able to, uh, stun the bleeding before then. So, no bushwhacker, just a lot of burn. Uh, but still, we, we do need a way to kind of stun the bleeding, and we're gonna be taking four here, down to seven on turn three, so you can see how fast, uh, a net like this is. And, uh, yeah, here I'm just on an impulse, looking for a thought effect. Uh, we did not find one. Uh, we're probably dead. I'll take the brainstorm here, because as you can see, uh, we have drawn a lot of mnemonic walls, which are not bad, but they're really not what we're looking for here, so. Yeah, it's, uh, you, you can kind of see, like, despite the fact that Tron is pretty powerful, it needs to get Tron very, very quickly, and... Yeah, now, now here we're just dead, so, yep, they killed us turn 4, and yeah, that's that's kind of the format now, right? Like, you have to be able to deal with these nets that can kill you turn 4, and, uh, yeah, like, if I had a fast Tron hand, um, maybe, but, yeah, maybe, maybe I shouldn't have that hand, but, you know, that's definitely where the format is, is at right now. So here I'm gonna have Rolling Thunder, um, it's, it's just a little too slow, and, uh, really you just wanna not die, that's kind of the role in this, this matchup, so, I'm gonna bring in the Breath Weapons, I'm going to bring in both Weather the Storms. Um, in terms of what I'm going to hunt, um, I normally hunt Ephemerate, which looks weird. I'm also going to bring in Ancient Grudge, because I have Relics. Um, so, hunting Ephemerate looks kind of weird, but the problem is that it requires you to have an Ammonic Wall that isn't going to get healed, and it's never going to work with Motive for the Bullshit, at least that's been my experience, so that's something to kind of be aware of. Uh, Ma is not great in the matchup, but we are a 20 land net, so I really don't want to hunt too many lands. Um, and then, yeah, so you hunt heap some number of moments pieces, but uh, I find that the card is not as good as Breath Weapon in the matchup, especially given the fact that they're going to be bringing in cards like Relic and sometimes Flaring Pain. And so the problem is that if they have Flaring Pain, your moments piece doesn't do anything. And I would rather just not play it hard like that. Like, it can be good, but the problem is that, at least in my experience, um, people tend to, um, people tend to just, uh, 
have either Relic to prevent you from flashing it back, so it's really just a two mana fog, which is not that good, uh, or they have a flaring pain, and then you get in trouble that way, so uh, it can be kind of awkward in, in that regard. Um, I'm looking to see if there's anything else I would change. Normally, I think what I do is I keep in one other prohibit, and I hunt a ball because the card doesn't do anything in the matchup. But it's a little bit risky because um, you're on 19 lands, and I just don't think that's where you want it to be. So it's a little bit different, right? I, I know how I born it previously, but the net is different now, so something to keep in mind. But I hear many people like this, we'll see. Maybe I'm supposed to like trim a brainstorm or something, I don't know. We're, we're, we're trying new things out. Uh, and here I'm gonna keep it. Here I'm gonna keep it. Um, this hand, you know, it has a brainstorm in Delorean. We can try me dial on red, so hopefully wipe the board on turn three, and that will hopefully give us enough time to maybe find a, a life in effect, uh, of some kind. So, the hand is not perfect by any means, but you have to do what you have to do. So, here the interesting question is, do you put this on green or on red? Um, I think for me, I'm going to put it on red, just to ensure that if I need some breath weapon on turn 3, um, I can do that, right? Um, because if they're going to heal you really quickly, you have to be ready for it. So here they're going to blast runner us. Uh, we have a hydro blast stop, I like that. Uh, and I'm just going to pass here, holding up the Hydro Blast. Uh, it is a little bit risky because it hurt, it hurt Hydro Blast the Brainstorm, but um, I, I do think that uh, I, I want to have Hydro Blast up or a possible Synthesizer or something of that nature. Uh, maybe I was supposed to Brainstorm in response, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see, uh, because they might have a Hydro Blast here, so that might have been a mistake on my part, but uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll have to wait and see here. So, it might Brainstorm... They might, um, Pirate Blast me here, which, if they knew it's unfortunate, and I definitely made a mistake, but, um, I think you have to do what you have to do. So here, I don't really want the set in drop rotation, and I don't think I want the set in breath weapon at this time. Not that it's a bad card, but, um, I want a fresh draw. So, you can see how Brainstorm kind of alleviated our hand a little bit, and it'll let us kind of get more options moving forward. So now I can, like, play a land here, uh, I have Hydro Blast available, I have uh, Impulse as well, so, you know, we have options, but uh, I have a way to kind of deal with the board a little bit, and I have a Hydro Blast up as well. So here they're going to activate to grow their guy, and we'll see that happen. They're just already in a bush flat, which is interesting, uh, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, they're just going to do nothing here. So, I think, hmm, do I take it, or do I do nothing? My concern is that I take it, um, well, hmm. I think I'm gonna take it, because my fear is that I'm blowing up now, and they, like, revert post combat, it's really bad for me. So, I'd rather just take it, and then not get rebirth. and now I'm going to wipe, because I, I have to use my mana, and I can't really afford to, like, let them rebirth post combat. So, that's not really where I want to be. And I do another breath weapon, which is good. Um, had I known I was drawing that, I might have played a little bit differently, but, um, yeah, I, we're, we're in an okay spot. Uh, they might bolt me here, which I'm just gonna let happen. Uh, I, I don't think that's worth a high note blast. Uh, they're gonna bolt me again here. Um, that's a little concerning. I think I'm still gonna let that happen. Um, obviously, you know, I hurt me in trouble here, but I don't want to, like, counter that, and then they go rebirth into Bushwhacker, and I'm dead. So... You have to be a little careful, and I'm hoping that the fact that they just earned a burst flat room means they have a second one, and that they're just going to go for it here. And so I'm going to let this go, and then I hope they burst flat or trying to heal me, and then I hit them. But if they don't do anything here, I'm just going to breath weapon, uh, because I don't really see a reason not to, and I don't think they can heal me unless I have, like, bolt, bolt fire blast, but that's pretty unlikely, so... Uh, yeah, here I'm just going to Impulse, looking for either a land, or a Weather in the Storm, or anything like that. So we found a Weather in the Storm, we also found the lands we wanted. I think Weather in the Storm is probably more valuable than the other lands. Uh, obviously, it does suck to miss a land drop here, but I think having life in is really important, and if I draw another Tron land, we're fine anyway, so. They're gonna bolt me here, I'm gonna let that happen, and then I'm honestly just going to 
to weather and game uh, the life now. I, I am kind of opening myself up to interaction here, but um, the fact of the matter is, being at 14 is a lot more comfortable than being at 5. So, they do have a window here, but it has to have an, an artifact. And so, we're asking them to have a lot, especially with only 3 cards in hand. So now I have the power, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop rotation, and this is the beauty of crop rotation, right? I hit crop immediately, I, I don't have to like map over the horse in the following turn, uh, which is really slow and, and losing the game. And now I can play a Molnithor and Heart Castle. If they Pyroblast it, I think I will Hydroblast Matt, just because I do want to draw the cards. Um, and I think they don't have anything, so... Um, I think it's important that I keep the cards flowing, and if they have two red blasts, then so be it. Um, it sucks, but, you know, you have to do what you have to do, and they can see. So, you can see how Brainstorm was helpful in kind of, um, taking the hand that was a little awkward, and still taking it into one that could keep the cards flowing, right? Because, like, that early hand had double crop rotation, a little awkward, right? Um, it was a little tricky, and so it's like, it's possible that we didn't find an impulse and we just kind of flood out and die, and like, the impulse let us find weather this form, so it's like, it's a very minimal effect, but like, it's pretty important, you know, and it's like, it allowed me to like, have early game plays without having Tron, while also like, just still being in the game, so, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty minor, but I think still pretty important, so... Um, yeah, one of the things to note is that, um, we won that game, but on the draw, your hand has to be pretty good, so, we were able to win the sideboard game, and that's normally how this goes in my experience, you typically win game, uh, you lose game one typically, although I, I have won game one before, like, it's not impossible, but you have to have a really, really good draw, um, but typically you lose game one, and then games two and three, uh, you are better prepared, not a guarantee, but you're, you're better equipped. Here I'm going to keep this hand, it's really close to turn 4 Tron, and we have a decent selection of hand trips, so I'm gonna hope that it's good enough, but it could easily get screwed over pretty quick, so it is a little bit of a risky hand. Here I'm kind of incentivized, I think, to brainstorm pretty early. Here I'm hoping they don't have a land and they get mana screwed. I, I really have to hope that's the case. Well, they hit a mountain, so if they're not going to get mana screwed, then that's unfortunate for us. Uh, I'm hoping for no rebirth here, but maybe they're going to see this island and, and be a little scared. So they're going to pain lightning me, so that's not the worst. Um, and here I think I'm just going to take one, and then on the end step, I'm going to brainstorm because I have to keep using my mana. It's a little awkward, because end of, end of current brainstorm is not the best. But, um, yeah, like, you can see here, triple wall, very awkward, very uncomfortable. Not what you want to be doing. So, I'm going imp to probably impulse, but I have to hold up Hydroblast, and I'm going to set an upkeep stop on my turn, because if I have to Hydroblast something, I don't want to draw the, set, the third wall, right? And so, yeah, so here there is going to Bushwhacker. It's a little bit annoying, but it's only a lightning bolt in this context, so I'm going to let it go. Um, and hope that they just don't have a land, and this is all there is, right? And then I'm looking for, like, a tower, I'm looking for weather the storm, energy refractor, those are the cards I'm kind of, kind of, in the, in the market for. Um, but if they just pass here, uh, we're, we're not in the worst shape. So here I'm going to impulse, I really like the energy refractor, and I think I have to take it. Uh, I'm, I'm sad that I'm, I'm, I'm monitoring the breath weapons, but if I find a tower, um, you know, I have the ability to, uh, maybe assemble the crown that I need. So here I'm gonna play the Refractor now, um, just get the hard drop going, and then hopefully I can maybe impulse into Thrawn, and, and, you know, stabilize before I die. Um, this is definitely, you can see, the, the difference between the play draws is pretty bit here. Uh, here they're just going to Chain Lightning me. Um, I, I, I think, hmm. I think I might have to let this go, but it's a little bit awkward. Um, I think I am just going to hide up last this. It's a little weird, but once again, I, I can't not use my mana, and, you know, if they have to rent last this, so be it. Um, I think I just, like, their, their draw seems like they're a little bit bottlenecked right now, and so I think that by, um, forcing them to, like, you know, either have the red blast or not, um, you know, I, I give myself the option to, like, maybe, maybe stabilize. So here, I'm gonna impulse, looking for a Tron land. Uh, we did not find the Tron land we were looking for, unfortunately. Uh, here, I think I'm just gonna take an untapped land, because, you know, I might need to have some five drop next turn. And the question of what I play here 
is probably not that important. Um, hmm. I think I'll just play her a false. And then I have to hope I'm not dead here. But we could very easily be dead. Um, unfortunately, we didn't find the tower. We didn't find the crop rotation. Um, we're hoping that their hand is maybe uh, a little bit awkward. But we're, we're definitely going to be smartling a little bit here. Um, okay, so this is six. We're not dead, but next turn we have to, like, draw a tower into, like, a weather the storm of some kind. And it's, it's gonna be pretty, pretty rough to, to get out on this one, but we're gonna get into some very specific draws. Tower? No. Teachings. Okay. So, if I impulse... Let me think. If I impulse into the tower, I have seven mana. And that's not enough. I think my win is win here. Uh, the problem is this costs four mana. And with refractor it costs five, and then weather it costs uh a little bit more. So hmm. I'm just gonna impulse because I kind of have to. Uh we'll see what we find. Hmm, I found the tower. I also found the weather. Yeah, like, if I were to take multiple of these, it would be great. But I cannot. Huh. I wish Impulse milled. <laughs> um, and it doesn't. So, yeah, if I were to, like, put all of these into my hand, I think I just win. But, or at least I'm, like, way more stable. But that's not the case. So, you can weather, gain some life. Hope that's enough. That might just be the play. Like, Tower gives us Tron, but then we don't have enough mana to do anything else. So, yeah, I think you just take the weather. Go you know, any order. And then I hope they don't have a burn spell. And that we get another turn for whatever reason. We're, we're, we're asking a lot here. And, uh... I think, like... We were, like, just one hard to slow to stabilize here like had i found maybe the tower a turn earlier or like a weather the turn earlier or like a crop rotation the turn earlier uh i might have been able to like get prawn missile do all that and, and be okay but here it looks like i am just dead uh they're gonna burn burn us and yeah we are dead for it exactly. so close game really really close game um i don't think we did anything too wrong um, yeah, you just need pretty good draws in the matchup, but you, hopefully you can kind of see why Brainstorm is good. Um, it lets you keep maybe, you know, a wider range of hands. Maybe that's also a downside. Maybe you need a very specific, uh, range of hands, but, um, I don't think I could have done anything too different in this game. Like, maybe I... Maybe I was supposed to hold the Hydroblast, but the mana was in a little awkward for that, so... It's, it's kind of hard to say, but... I wonder what I would have drawn, I guess I'll never know, but... If I did somehow survive, I, we had to draw, like, a literal tower there. And then we could have gone, like, you know, tower into, um, teams into another weather. And then, um... Actually, maybe we could have been some little different there, too, but, like... Yeah, we, we definitely were just, like, one or two short, so... It was close, but, you know, once again, format's a lot faster than it used to be. And, uh... Yeah. That's, uh, sounds like it rumbles sometimes, so, uh... Yep. I will see you all in the next match. Alright, so, this hand is pretty good. Um, you have an Hero Factory, you have a Tron land, and a, un another untapped land. It's, it's about as good as you can hope for. Like, obviously the best turn is, like, turn 3 Tron, but, um, that is definitely, uh, hard to come by, so, uh, you know. You can't, you can't really force it, but, I mean, the hand's good enough, right? It does enough of what you need it to do that, um, I think it's worth trying. So, it looks like we're against the green net of some kind. Oh, we're up against land destruction. <laughs> that's unfortunate. Um, that's unfortunate. Um, 
Land destruction is like not very common, especially with all the bridges in the format, but eh, it is what it is. Um Kind of frustrating to play against it, just because uh, I think land destruction is not well positioned and also, like, incredibly unfun to play against, but, um, yeah, what are you gonna do? You know, you, uh, you can't pick your matchups, so, uh, oh, it's elves! Oh, thank god. Okay, this is way more, way more interesting. I, I respect my opponent way more. I love elves. Elves is a really cool net. Um, I, I just don't like land destruction. I just think it's really unfun games. I played it with it and against it, and it's like, the games are very kind of one-sided. You either do the thing or you don't. Um, Elves is gonna probably be a little bit tougher, but, um, or, not impossibly tough, but it's definitely not gonna be easy, because, you know, they have ways to kind of defeat the fault effects, but, um, we do have ways around that. Um, the thing about Elves is that it is a net that is, um, kind of gotten really hosed by all the, the sweepers in the format, which is, Kind of unfortunate, because I think, like, it's a really cool net. Um, it's just not well positioned, but they have a pretty good draw here. They're only to, like, Aquarian and the Timberwatch health, and we might just be dead next turn if we don't draw a Fall Effect. We're definitely dead next turn if we don't draw a Fall Effect, so... Um, yeah, we're gonna ho have to hope to draw, like, a moment of peace here of some kind, but... Uh, yeah, if we don't draw one, we might be dead. Um... Yeah, they had a very explosive draw here. Uh, yeah, when you, when you have an unanswered, uh, priest, uh, this is what you're capable of. So, uh, yeah, we'll kind of have to wait and see. Okay, well, so we found what we were looking for. Um, we're now kind of in a tricky spot. Because while we do have the moments piece, uh, we do need to draw a land here, uh, to stay afloat. So, that is a little bit of the downside of the Lorian package, but, you know, if we draw, like, a tower or, like, a crop rotation, or really just any land, uh, you know, we're still kind of in it, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's gonna be kind of close. I'm gonna play the last card from hand that we know about, and then, yep, we are just right here, so. I'm gonna see if they try to kill me here. Um, right now I'm taking six, one, two, uh, one, two, three, four, five, uh, eleven, uh, they're gonna probably estimate Timber Watch, and then I have to double hit, but I think they'll just estimate it, untap, estimate it, and then I'm forced to fall here. So this is, uh, 9, 10, uh, yeah, this is 19, so I'm not lying. They're gonna do it again here, and then I will be forced to pull some Marasa. Uh, 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 or not pull some Marasa, sorry. Uh, moment of peace, sorry. Uh, pardon, pardon my friend. So yeah, we're in a moment's piece here, and then we have to draw either a tower, or crop rotation, or, uh, an untapped land. Uh, if we don't, or like another moment's piece. But, if we don't, I think we're dead. So, I think you have a draw with the refractor, but then the, the, the set of options is pretty narrow. It's like, tower must. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. Tower. Wow, we hit the tower. That was incredible. Uh, very, very good draw. So here, I think I'm just forced to, like, play the modded wall, ramp the moment's piece from the yard to buy myself another turn. Uh, but yeah, ripping the tower there was really important. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're now Matt in it. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we can find an ephemerate or more moment's piece effects. But game one, elves normally doesn't have a great way to kind of deal with what we're doing here, so... We're gonna make him have it at a set in time. They're gonna lean, okay. Hopefully nothing too crazy here. Um... They are gonna be able to vomit whenever they lean into, so it's just eh, nothing too crazy. It's like Timberwatch and Aquarian and stuff like that. Uh, but nothing we can't handle. So here, what um, I'm likely to do is throw the mnemonic wall under the bus, because if it keeps me alive, it probably won't, even they have, you know, the Aquarian range here with the Timber, but I think it's reasonable to just, like, um, try and, and make, make it work, but it probably won't. Well, we'll have to wait and see. Um, next turn, I probably... Evoke the Molnithor, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens, but, 
the elephant and play in the hand, which makes sense. And they haven't just sent Melanie here, we heard me in trouble and draw that, but um I don't know if they're playing that with what they have here. I'm gonna block the maybe just read her on the board and then we're taking five. Taking nine. What are they targeting with this? They're targeting it on this. So thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Uh oh this is actually lethal. Okay. Oh yeah. Alright. Okay. You got me. I knew what I gotta do. Yeah, I was hoping, hoping this wouldn't be enough, but I knew a lot of Aquarian range here, so we're definitely gonna be uh in a little tight spot here. So here I in theory can hard pass Molnuther, and then I can you know tap the tower, drop rotation for another tower. Um, and then, I, I don't know if having two blockers is enough here, so, maybe, I should just emote the monitor, because I think having more mana for other things might be a better use. Um, okay. So, here we probably play this naming green? And then, I actually... I think I do the crop rotation play next turn anyways, because I, I want to use all, as much mana as I can, as my mana's going to be pretty tight for the following turns, and I also need to see as many cards as I possibly can. So I'm going to tap the tower, have one colorless floating, set another land for a tower, and then, um, not one of the crowd lands, obviously, but maybe the island or something. And then we'll set this, get a tower of power, and then we will flash back the moment's piece. And then here we're really just looking for uh, a missile teachings, uh, impulse maybe, brainstorm would do it, right? This, this is kind of the spot where brainstorm might shine, right? Like, I have a, a number of cards in my hand that are not very good, and brainstorm gives me the possible out of, um, you know, getting out of this spot. So, it looks like they're mono green, even the fact that they have winding way and lead, so I don't think I have to worry about this and Melanie, but, um, well, we'll see. They're not doing anything here, which is fine. And let's see what we draw. Okay, Impulse, that's step one. Uh, I have to double check my mana real quick. So, I can tap the tower, I'll have two floating. Uh, I think I can tap the... The... Another one, I think that's okay. Okay, we found the moment piece, I'm gonna take that one. I'm not gonna take brains from me greedy. Uh and then do I have enough to uh do everything that I want to do here? So let's double check. I think I do. I think I have just barely enough here. So I do want to once again use all my mana when when possible. Um so I can crop rotation this for a tower, or really any other land for a tower, and then we'll be okay. So let's just do that main phase, because, um, I actually, could I, no, 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 nah, maybe. I could cite a Lalorian, but I, I don't think I need to. Uh, set this for a tower, and hopefully this shows the power of crop rotation, like, it's letting me have so many more spells than a hard, like, you know, expedition map ward. Um, so, I don't know, this doesn't convince you, I don't know what would. Um, I mean, I got lucky, I, I had to draw the power, but, like, crop rotation also would have done it, so, I don't know. This doesn't sell you on crop rotation, I, I, I don't know what will, so. Yeah, I'm just on a moment's piece here. And, uh, yeah, hopefully they just vomit in their hand, and then we're fine. Um, next turn, I think we're in the clear? Oh, they're in a distant Melanie. Oh, no! That was their last card? Oh, they're in a... What are they doing with this one? They're in the top three. Oh, okay. I, I thought that was a distant Melanie, and I got scared. Um, was that, that, that might have killed me. This is a pretty cool card, though. Actually. I kind of like it. It's pretty neat. Um, yeah, I, I do like it. Okay, so... Here, I think what I'm going to do is teachings. We're gonna ram an ephemerate. 
And I have uh, prohibit map up now. So that's nice. We're going to ephemerate my mnemonic wall. So this is now infinite faults for the rest of the game. And now what I can do is I'm going to hold up prohibit because I'm afraid of something weird happening. And like they might have like a Meridian Lonmo or something. Like, I don't know. It's been a while since Alpha has seen play, but. Um, I might need to draw some. Ah, it doesn't matter if it's draw or main, but. Um, hopefully this convinces them to scene. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so I mean, they kind of made me play it out, and I, I wouldn't just had to eat solid until I rolling thunder, but, yeah. Uh, I will take it. I guess I could have gotten pretty successful but, wow, yeah. Hopefully that convinces you, um, the power of rap rotation. Because if it doesn't, I don't know what will. Uh, with that being said, I'm gonna hunt the... The weather, it's not very good. I think I want to keep rolling. Might be a mistake, but I think you want to have that as an out. Um, I like for him. I don't know about Pulsamarasa. It's maybe necessary. Um, I don't know. It's pretty bad otherwise. I think I definitely want to run because they might be a relic net. They might be a lawnmower net. Like, you just want to have that specific card. So, I don't hate that. Um... Yeah, you know he went on the moment pieces. Yeah, maybe I do his hunt the, the pulse and what else do I hunt? Like maybe a Lorian? But feels wrong. Hmm. You hunt hunt maybe like up for him it. Not the worst. Maybe like an impulse, but yeah, maybe I, maybe I shame a brainstorm. Now, that might be wrong, I don't know, but I don't really want to hunt Lorians because, like, I'm not a huge fan of hunting lands. Like, you, you saw how, like, important it was to draw lands in that, in that last game, so I'm not huge on, like, low land counts in Tron. I think Tron really wants to have, like, 24, 25 lands, if possible, so. Um, here we have 24, you count Lorians, so I, um, you, maybe you can count Lorians, like, half of the land, but still, like, we're definitely, I think, a little low for comfort, so, um, I, uh, I think, I think this is where I would, where I would want to be, like, you want to have breath weapons, but you also want to have moments pieces, so I, I think you want to have both, wrist circle, not good against the elves yet, but, yeah, um, this went from, I don't know, I mean, a lot of, like, very specific cards kind of shine here, we definitely got lucky, but, like, I think Tron leaves a little bit of luck in this day and age, so, but yeah, I mean, things, things definitely were a little tight there, but hopefully, hopefully, you saw the power of certain inclusions that I specifically chose. Uh, this land is not a heap. Um, one land, sorry, nope, not good enough. Uh, instant mulligan. Um, this hand is better, actually. I'm gonna bottom the ephemerate because we're just not there yet. And, um, the other cards, I think, are more important. Maybe you can bottom the, the Redundant Lorian. There, there is an argument for that, but, um, I think what we have here is, is reasonable. Okay, Breath Weapon was a great draw. Um, maybe I wasn't supposed to play this. Maybe I wasn't supposed to play a Mine, actually. Yeah, that might have been a bit of a mistake, but, um, I, I'm not sure, actually. I'm half tempted now, honestly, to just, like, cycle for red, and then just, like, breath weapon them next turn. Yeah. I'm gonna just do that. I'm gonna just do that. Get the Fjord. And then play it. And then pass. Yeah, that might be wrong, but... I think, like, just having breath weapon turn 3 means, like, they're gonna vomit, and then you just wipe, and then that's it. So, they don't have any blue mana right now. They could get some blue mana, but... Um, I'm fine if they just want to vomit, and then all they have left after this is, like, an Elvish Vanguard, so... Okay, they hit Quirion and it doubles Timber, but that's not gonna save them here. At the end of this, they'll probably just have a giant Vanguard, which is scary, but... Not, and it killed me very quickly. I'm gonna have probably, I'm looking at maybe three to four turns, so... You know, I, I have some time, I have a little bit of breathing room. So, yeah, um, I'm kind of interested in the inclusion of armor elf in their list, because I feel like that's not good with Queen Ranger, 
maybe they have like Euthermius Brawls or something. I love Armor Elf Euthermius Brawl. It's like one of my favorite combos, but I don't love it when it's in Paranin and Conjunction with Land Destruction. I like it more as like a, a walls kind of mana combo thing. I think that's more fun. But, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have to wait and see. They're probably evaluating whether or not they want to overextend into a possible breath weapon, which is a reasonable thing to be concerned about as the Elves player. But I, I think that, um, you know, maybe they're supposed to just not play scared, I don't know. Um, it's tough, like, this is kind of the thing, like, when they added these sweepers, they really just kind of put elves under the bus a little bit. Um, I think elves was a really cool net, and I, I did like when it was playable and, and good, but, yeah, it's kind of fallen off, unfortunately. Um, it's kind of a bummer, because, like, I think green as a color in pop is really underrepresented. So, it, it would be cool if it saw more play. As a color. Oh, they're cycling the end. Okay. So they're near the island, which might mean they. Oh. Okay. Uh, are they gonna play? Oh, I guess they can't play this. Huh. Okay. Interesting. They're gonna play Timberwatch. Alright. And then the other Aquarian. Well. Um, they don't have blue, so I'm slamming it. And I have a moment piece too, so. Yeah, I'm not giving them any breathing room here. I'm not going to let them untap the timber watch. I'm just going to wipe. And yeah, you got your giant man nerd. But uh, they have two lands in hand that we know about. Um, yeah, they're going to play this. They have a forest. And then he run unknown at this stage. But I'm feeling pretty good. Um, let's see what we draw here. All right, we drew the ephemerate, but that's okay. Um, you know, it's, it's actually not bad. Um, but also, like, once again, this is why we play Brainstorm, so it can fit stuff like that. They have a Priest, pretty good card. We'll grow the Vanguard a little bit, but, um, I'm not super concerned about the board site. Like, we're taking five, and I guess we're on, like, a two-turn slot, but I have the moment to just lined up. I guess that they have a counter spell in hand, that hurt me a, a, a problem, but if I draw, like, any form of fast mana here, we should be okay. Um, I'm gonna impulse here. They want to counter the counter. Um, energy refractor or a wall? Probably a wall. Energy refractor is good, but not necessary at this junction. Um, maybe that's wrong, but I I feel like um okay we have the, the power plant. There's a tension there, but uh, I'm just I'm just saying the power plant. I think um I think the power plant is more important for assembling Tron. And here now I can go. Uh, I guess I'll just play the wall right now, grabbing, um, probably Impulse. And then I can, um, I might be incentivized to shuffle with Lorian, but I'm not sure yet. I'm just gonna hold up Moment Space, um, and then I can Impulse trying to find something, but, um, yeah, we, we are not, not dead by any means. Them having counter spells now is a little spooky, but, um, we're not, like, out of the woods yet. I actually might be incentivized here to, um, oh, they have a distant melody? Thank you. But it's not as scary as a current man, as they're only drawing three. So, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with this. It, it hurt him in worse, so. They're in it, Sentinels. I think, I did point out the pulse, right? I need to be aware of that. Um. Yes, I did. So, my new block, the wall is gone forever. Um, so this is kind of our one one problem right now. Um, but I think even the circumstances, I'm actually just in a moment piece now. It's a little bit weird, but I want to do it now because if I do need to throw away the wall for whatever reason, I can do that. But on top of that, um, let's say, for example, that they, um, they do have a counter spell here. I'm, I'm not dead, right? So... You know, basically, like, I could have done nothing, but I think I'd rather just do this, and then that way, um, I, I, I block next turn to me, okay. Uh, or I can just draw that, too. Um, so here, I think I'm going to lead on the impulse. Yeah, let's lead on the impulse. And, ooh, and it here, Frat, there's a bit one. I'm gonna take that one pretty handily. And then I can play the island now. Play a refractor. And oh, do another one. Okay. Yeah, now I think the game is 100% over. Unless I have like multiple counters. But 
what I do is slash that moment piece on their upkeep. And then... Yeah, I'm gonna just do this now. I mean, if they counter it, I want them to counter it now. I mean, if they're gonna think, oh, he really needs this. And then the counter spell hunt on their hand, I can play the other one, and then we're, we're chilling. And if it does resolve, then I can just ephemerate the mnemonic wall, um, grabbing, like, an impulse to keep digging, and the engine is now assembled. And yeah, they do have a counter spell for the ephemerate, I can flitter it back. So, so now they're empty handed, they use their counter, but we can just get the engine back online with flitter. Um, the mnemonic wall, so, okay, why do you, if it hits, like, fairy mahab here, okay, no fairy mahab, yeah, no, nothing they do here really matters now, uh, what, what's, what's likely going to happen is, um, I will next turn, you know, flitter this and the, uh, refractor, grab the ephemerate, ephemerate the wall, and then probably get that breath weapon with the intention being that it prevents them from distant melanin and crazy things. So, yeah, I think that's the play. They're gonna have a couple giant vanguards, maybe? Or maybe not, I don't know. I, I, I can't tell. Wait, are they... I guess I didn't take the vanguard? I, I don't know, I'm confused. Might have been a misclick, it's okay. Um... Or, I don't know, didn't they? Huh. I, I can't tell. Well, um... Let's just do our, our thing that we talked about. So, flip through these two. Grab the Ephemerate. Okay. Yes. Then I'm going to Ephemerate the wall. Grab. I'm going to just breath weapon here. I, I think this is definitely the play. And then I, I, I still have the, the moment to piece up in hand, so we're fine. And then, yeah, let's just wipe their board. Cuts off a lot of mana, leaves them, oh, and it was here, I'm just blind, okay, I was like, I, I couldn't see it for whatever reason. Um, and then, yeah, we're gonna, on their upkeep, before they have any cards in hand, we're going to moment piece again here, and then our ephemerate should come off the rebound, and then hopefully we'll be okay. If this happened, like, in this battle, we're in trouble, but, um, we're doing all right otherwise, I think. So, we'll see. We need to say, oh, Timber, okay. Sure. So, future breath weapons, not very good, but that's okay. Uh, or maybe not as good as they could be. Um, so here I'm going to get Matt the Ghostly Flitter this time around, because uh, I want to make sure that uh, I have an engine online, and I also still have other things going for me, so I'm going to go like this. I'm going to actually hard pass the Lorian. Because I don't need the half one to brainstorm, but hopefully you can see how useful uh, brainstorm uh, me. Okay, or they're just done. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, yeah, so that was that. Um, that was the, the match. We went too old, so can't be too upset. But uh, yeah, I mean, breath weapon is kind of the reason why elves fell off. Like you saw how how map breaking turn three breath weapon was. I love elves. I think it's a really cool net. I. I gotta give props to my opponent for playing it. I think, like, you know, Green as a color is in a tough spot in the format right now. Like, I wish Green as a color was better, because I think it's a really cool color and offers a lot of unique things, but right now it's just not really seeing much play, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, uh, we meet Elves, thankfully. Um, we, hopefully we should. Like, we have moments of peace and, you know, breath weapon and all that, so we should be poised to meet them, but, uh, yeah, opponent played well for the most part. Didn't find any mistakes. I got a little bit lucky when I needed to, but you know, try did its thing, and hopefully, you can kind of see how brainstorm uh, can help. You know, facilitate kind of not getting screwed. It's one of the pretty parts about Tron, I think, is that you need to have more early game plays to keep up with the format, and I think brainstorm allows that. So, yeah, that was uh, the second match. I'll see you all in match three. All right, so we are Matt for the third Matt. Um, I'm gonna keep this in. It's a little bit risky, but we have close to Tron. Um, obviously this is a little bit of the downside with playing the Fjord in the main board is that if we had instead a blue green duel, you could uh have turn three Tron. Guaranteed, and then maybe find a refractor on the impulse, but easier said than done. 
Uh, so I think we just eat this and we'll see what happens. I'm gonna remove the upkeep slot and we'll just exit on their turn. Nothing to do here. Um, yeah, and then, well, we found Crown anyway, so Crown rotation's pretty bad. It looks like we're up against either Guardians or the Dredge Net, based on the land that I'm seeing here. Uh, heard me either, so we don't know. Uh, this might be Guardians. Yeah, this definitely looks like Guardians now. Guardians, I think, is a pretty favorable matchup, but I heard me wrong. I'm gonna just take the refractor here. I wanna make sure I have. Uh, all my colors really early. Here's the best card. Knew that. Um, and then I'll play a power plan and hope to drop brainstorm. Hope you, you can see how good brainstorm would be in a spot like this, right? Like just to draw three, put bad, you know, some bad lands and hopefully draw more spells. So they're gonna limit us. Um, I have to hope they don't draw like a monarch or initiative card. Um, but otherwise, you know, we'll see. Um, unfortunately, you know, this is a little bit of a rough spot in that I don't have anything going for me. But um, at the same time, like they're a pretty slow net to kill you, and you know, they're they already playing their ball and it wasn't that good, so. Not the worst by any means. We'll, we'll take a draw here. And we have a Lorien revealed. Um, I'm just gonna hard cast that one. Um, there is no reason to, to island cycle. And, and this is the beauty of playing it hard like that is, you know, that could have been another land, but now I get to draw three and keep the hard flowing. So that's a pretty big deal. Then I draw an impulse. So I'm just going to play a tower and pass. Uh, in terms of what I discard, it's probably going to be an island. Um, untapped lands aren't good, but I don't need the island. And I'm trying to just get enough mana so I can kind of fireball them reasonably quickly. Um, but yeah, if you find a brainstorm, I'll be pretty happy to have a brainstorm. Um, we'll see. Looks like they're in a deadly dispute, one of the most powerful cards in the format. Nope, fanatical offering. Okay, that's way less scary. It's still a pretty good combo, but... The fact that they don't get the mana is, is really, really important. Because now it prevents them from, like, throwing land into, like, Thorn or something. So, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm very happy with that. And then, oh, whoops, no, we're not going to go simply. We're going to Impulse. Hopefully hit a Brainstorm or an Impulse or whatever. You found another Lorian, which I will gladly, gladly take. You can take him for him, but I, I'd rather just draw more cards, so... That is the plan. Draw, draw, draw. Okay, get some blue. And our draw cards. Draw, draw, draw. Okay, well, we found the Rolling Thunder. That's a little spooky because that you have hand disruption, but uh, also not that worried. I think here I'm just going to start discarding lands. Like, I don't really... I'm gonna probably not just earn the Thriving Isle because somehow they do get rid of the Refractor. I'm gonna be really color screwed, so... I'm gonna try to play it safe. I mean, I do have the, the, the Reflector to protect the Refractor, but I, I'm not the type to, like, go all in on Refractor because I think it can definitely be deadly. But, regardless, you can see how, you know, while we haven't found a Brainstorm yet, it would be really great if we did. Um, I think it would make the hand so much better. Oh, there's that. Ooh, Nemonic Wall. Uh, I'm fine at the end of this. Feels like Impulsive Bat, gain some life, get some insulation. Uh, but yeah, I'm just gonna ram a Lorian here. I, I don't really care about it. I'm just looking for critical mass at this point. Uh, I'm gonna ram that Lorian. I could ram an Impulse, it does seem more hard, but I, I think I'd rather just, just have a critical mass. They're gonna heal my eye. It's fine. At this point, I'm guessing their hand is full of removal, so... Yeah, I, uh, I'm okay with that. And then I'm just gonna play a Tron land, and so, you know, I don't need to Lorian just yet. Um, I also don't want to be discarding too many lands, because they are gonna be gaining life, and, uh, I want to make sure I have enough mana to Rolling Thunder them, so that is, that is kind of the idea here. Um, 
they're in a wellspring, and then I'm probably going to pulse back the mnemonic wall. We'll see what happens. I could, in theory... I don't know how many bots they play. Like, if I knew they only had one bot, I'd probably just rolling thunder in their face. Um, but I don't know. I don't know how many bots they play. So, it's a little risky. What I could do, is I could, like, rolling thunder them for, like, half their life total. Like, maybe not a ton, but, like, a, a small portion. And then, um, just, you know, Get it back with the, the, the mnemonic wall. Um, I'm not here, though. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do that yet. This the thing. So I'm just going to play a monitor. Okay, we have our own bot. Uh, I think I'm just going to play this. Naming red. And then I'm going to just earn the moment to me. So I just don't need it. Um, yeah. And now you can see here I have Brainstorm plus Lorian, so uh, I'm feeling pretty good. And also, like, if they have to rest main more, I can protect my Rolling Thunder, which is really important. So that's another benefit. They're gonna tightly blame me. Okay. And then they're gonna, ah, this is what they do, they're gonna start draining me. Yeah, 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 every turn they're gonna, you know, drain, and so this makes it harder for me to fireball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so here we're going to brainstorm. Put that, uh, probably by, and I don't think I need weather, so I'm gonna put that with Matt. And then here, you know, I thought about wanting to, uh, you know, Preserve the mana, but here I'm just gonna get a tower and you know, even more mana, and then we'll mess. So here I can play another Tron land, and then I have uh, 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 one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eleven. We'll hit them for eleven. And then we will play our wall, get back the Rolling Thunder, and then that should be lethal. Um, unless they have main board to rest. But if they have main board to rest in a, in a, you know, another rain artifact, they got me fair and square. And can argue about that. It just happened. I'm probably dead at that point. But um, I, I'm not here in a light. Maybe I'm supposed to, like, you know... Try to leave one mana up, so that way I can, like, brainstorm it away. So, yeah, there's that. I'm just not playing around Rainbow and hate game one. Yeah, they're just spinning darkness, that's fine. Yeah, I'm just like, I feel like they're gonna be gaining enough life that I wanna kind of just do this now. Because I think next turn this is lethal, right? Like, it's, uh, 19, so I need to get a lot of life here. Or maybe it's 17, I don't know, but... It's, 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 it's gonna be a lot, so, it also just means that, like, you know, you're gonna probably have to do it in pieces anyways, so I'm fine just kind of breaking it up now, and, uh, yeah, alright, so they're gonna some light, yeah, so now they're mapped up to it, so basically this is just a game of, like, you know, like, uh, it, it's, it's just making sure that they, you know, can stay above Rolling Thunder range, which is fine, let's see what we draw here. I have 1, 2, 3, 10, 19, 20 mana. I mean, I think this is lethal. Uh, I guess they might have Retiner Spartan. Yeah, like, if I just go like this. And then I, you know. Like that. Oh, it's 17, not, not 19. Okay, never mind, never mind. Um, then yeah, let's just draw cards. Let's just draw cards. Pass Lorian. Draw, draw, draw. Play Refractor. Keep drawing. Play Thriving Isle. On red. Then I will uh, Impulse. I'm not going to brainstorm because I'm afraid of hand disruption, so I'm going to try to play a little cautiously. 
Uh, I'll take a moment for this is fine. I will, uh, I'll just another moment for honestly, I, I, I don't really need it in play it, we're being real here. Honestly, I'm just looking for more crowd lands at this point, so. Nope, no crowd land found. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, in a weather, and then, yeah, it's just on a brainstorm. Um... At this point, like, I don't think they're healing me through Gammy. It can't really hurt Rats anymore, because, like, you know, that's a little bit of a liability. So, uh, we'll see. We'll see. They're not keep draining me. So, little by little. Um, it we draw. Yeah, any crowd land up the top would do it. Like, once again, that does play into something, so. It's a little, little, gotta be a little cautious. Gotta be a little cautious. Well, they're conceding, which is nice on them. They didn't have to do that, but next one I was going to ball and then probably a brainstorm in the teachings, run another brainstorm, and we probably had that locked up, so. I mean, it wasn't like a guarantee, it was gonna be kind of a slow, but I, I appreciate them saving time. Okay, sideboard. Um, I want Ancient Rudge because it's really good against their relics. I, I think Breath Weapon is probably bad. Like, you can heal Crip Rats, I guess, but... Why is my response? So, I mean, I'm very good. Um, you put Morning Gorilla Shaman, it's just a way to, like, you know, eat some of their graveyard cards, and, you know, do stuff like that. I'm probably saying, like, a moment's piece. Like, you want a couple, but you don't need that many. I think this is more than enough. Maybe I want the other weather, like, maybe Weather the Storm is better than Moment's Piece in the matchup, um, hard to say. I still think this is maybe a fine split, so... You could born in Wrist Circle, um, Wrist Circle is not a terrible one of, uh, even the fact that, like, you know, you can basically make it so that they can't really heal you with damage anymore, or it's really difficult to do so, so... I'll, I'll try it like this, we'll see what happens, um... This hand is like he it's a little bit risky because like you're just gonna rest the the refractor and then the hand kind of crumbles, but eh, what are you gonna do? Can't, can't win them all. So they have a hand fire, that's a way for them to end life. Um I was gonna play the island there, but I, I think I should probably just play Tron land so that way I can have the possibility of turn three Tron. Um you just on the none, but yeah, hand fire is a great way for them to like, you know, not uh Die to Rolling Thunder super easily, but the, the downside with Hamfire, in my opinion, is that it's a card that doesn't do anything. Um, like, it, it's not drawing cards, it's not impacting the board in a serious way, so there's definitely a trade off with that card. So, you know, it, it is what it is. But the good news is we do crop rotation, so next for me and Thrawn, uh, we can probably crop rotation into a tower and then have Prohibit up. Um, they're just gonna be doing this on return, it's fine, whatever. Uh, we have Ancient Rudge now for it, too. Uh, I think here I'm just going to crop uh, in the main phase. This leaves me with the ability to miss teachings on their turn, if that is something I deem necessary. Um, but yeah, now now we have Tron, we have, we have the, uh, the Refractor online, we have Prohibit to protect our Refractor. We're, we're doing pretty okay. They, um, if they play like a Deadly Dispute here on their main, I'm, I'm countering it 100%. But, nothing like that's happening. Okay, they're gonna do this. Um... I think I'm okay with this, honestly. It's, it's, it's whatever. But yeah, annoying, but still, whatever. Okay, uh, I will blow this up now. Um, it's not a relic, but it's annoying, and I don't want them in, in like, a ton of life to the point where I can't kill them reasonably, so... That, that's kind of, kind of my, my rationale for doing this play. Uh, I am going to just pass the monitor. Uh, I don't really care if they kill it. I'm just gonna get it down. Maybe it deals a little bit of damage. Uh, here I'm just going to cycle. Um, I really don't like missing land drops, so I'm not gonna allow that. Uh, I'm gonna get this one. You heard it red, but I think green is maybe a little bit more important for the hand, so... Yeah. And also, like, we can just demonic wall that Lorian anyway. We can also demonic wall that the Ancient Grudge, but... Yeah, just healing the campfire, I think, is, is pretty important. Yeah, they're gonna heal our mold if they're what we do. I not really say that's much of a surprise when it is mono removal. So, yeah. Doesn't look like they have much else going on for them. So, here, uh, I'm just an Alorian, I think. I, uh, 
I want to hit a land here, and hopefully this lets me do that. It's possible I miss, but uh, you miss, you miss. And then you're in here. They're gonna just be sure. Yeah, they they might as well take the window, so it makes sense. I I wouldn't probably counter that, so I I think that's reasonable. And then a red blast this. Oh shit. Oh yeah. Well, that's annoying. That's very annoying. Um, yeah, I'm not I'm not thrilled about that one. But uh, this is what it is. They don't have their uh, initiative card, so you know that's important, but. Uh, can't really say I'm thrilled about that sequence there. We missed the land drop, we missed three cards, like... Yeah, that's not how I wanted that to go. But, uh... Yeah, it, uh... It happens, it happens, so... Okay, well, uh, I'm gonna do it again. If they have it again, so be it. Uh, my, I'm gonna make them have it again. And hopefully they don't run down and spew in the red glass a second time. Holy hell, though. But you gotta make him do it, right? So no reason to play around. Oh, yeah, well, shit. <laughs> Having spice, I mean, shame on me, I guess. But uh, I, I just don't think I'm supposed to play around it. Um, we'll see, though. We'll see. Okay, thank God. Um, here, I think I just played Tron Land, so, you know. I'll probably just earn a moment's peace. And then... Yeah, just chill. He's a slash metable and they're not, not that important, so. Um. And they, it looks like they have their initiative card. Oh, their heart has some a troll. Okay, sure. Uh, that is a lot for sure, but I, I don't know if I care all that much about it, so. It's not like the initiative where it's like chronic pressure, so. Yeah, I think I just play the wall, probably grabbing the right grab. Don't know. Um, what if I relic or ancient run? Just so that way, like, I can deal with multiple relics if they have them. But yeah, well, it hurt me to say. Hard to say. Hard to say. Moldrifter. Okay. Um, I do have weather, so I can use weather, like. Other turn, but I think this is reasonable. Like, just eating the grudge that means that, like, they have other campfires in the future, right? And you get rid of them. Um, yeah, just, just little things like that. The blade, yeah, and also grudge the blade. That's also another important one, too. I'm not gonna prohibit this, I don't think it matters, so I'm not going to. I'm probably just gonna OEOT teachings unless I play something really spooky. I'm gonna play another troll, looks like. That's what it is. This is also why Rizzle Circle is really good. You get Circle and play, like, you know, eventually they just can't really fight through it anymore. And then they can't win. So. They, they might play the other enough limit. Well, that's not really good, even the fact that I haven't run already, so. I, I don't really understand that play. It's like, they know I have the. Run. Okay, whatever. I, I don't know. Uh, I think there was more games to be played. I think that was actually far from over, but it's also just not a good matchup for them, so I can kind of understand why. Like, let's draw some. Oh, yeah, so I was going to hit the tower, have a ton of mana, play a Moldifer, hit Brainstorm in a crop rotation, and yeah, then I was probably just going to play Circle and they die, so uh, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, but also, yeah, this is why I thought that Runch is. Uh, there's also these, there's also maybe Empire, maybe Relics, but like, I think this card is pretty valuable, and I don't really need more hard draws, so I already have a up and I also have teachings for whatever I'm really looking for, so. I, I mainly have the engine together, it was mainly just a, 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 the manner of not fumbling, but yeah, I mean, this is a pretty good matchup for me, like, I think it's a little closer than it looks, because like, they have Red Blast, they have Rotten Reunion, they have stuff like that, but also like, their draws are not good, they didn't draw like, their initiative creature fast enough, like, I think what makes the, the matchup harder is when they go, like, deadly to spear into turn four initiative into, like, pressuring me, and I'm, like, behind the eight ball, and they follow it up with, like, red blast and stuff like that, and, like, graveyard hate. Yeah, that, that can be, that breaking, that can be hard to deal with, right? So, it's not like they're, it's 
impossible for them. Like, it's more so just, like, they're not going to have an issue in every game. They're not with zero hand trips, so they're not always going to find what they need. Um, they're straight us, so. But, uh, but yeah, with that being said, um, I think it's closer than it looks. Obviously, we two road, so you can just say it's favorable, but I, I don't think it's as favorable as I made it look there. I think their, their draws were a little bit subpar, and my draws were very good. Um, and I think that when it goes that way, I am probably going to always win. Um, but yeah, uh, generally speaking, um, yeah, I, I think we played well. I think our opponent played well for the most part. I think there was maybe more game to play, but I can also understand why you would want it and see an unfavorable matchup. So I get it. You value your time, and there's nothing wrong with that. So, uh, but yeah, that's, that's it, really. Uh, we're 2-0. Uh, we're 2-1 right now, but we 2-1 the match, and, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys for match four. All right, so we are up with... Uh, to match number four, and the sand is not heatable. Let's mull it in. Um, yeah, I'll eat this in. Probably in the bottom of the station, because it's not what we need right now. But, uh, yeah, this sand has brainstorming the Lorien, so hopefully that can fix it for us. Uh, I'm gonna probably just lean on an island, and then probably brainstorm. We'll see. But I'm, I'm probably gonna wait on the brainstorm. I don't think I wanna brainstorm. Okay, so unless I work against either the just night net or something else. I'm gonna put that in the island and the pulse, I think. And I'm gonna play a land and sight on the Lorien for a uh probably a false, yeah. Uh the pretty part about this matchup is like they have uh cleansing wildfire, which can blow up our frog land, so that's a little bit problematic. Um but there's not a sign you can really hear about that to remedy it, so uh, you kind of just have to fight through it and hope that you can do that, so, you know, there's, there's some issues, but, uh, you gotta play the best of your ability. And then a mold for a moment, that's fine. Uh, next turn, I'm probably going to impulse looking for a land. Uh, I also have Lorien for land, but I'd rather hit a Thrawn land if I can. Yeah, so we found a Thrawn land. Happy to see that one. I'll play it, and then I'm probably just on the impulse main. They're probably going to counter the impulse, and I would not fault them in the slightest. And we hit the power plant, so I'm just gonna take the power plant and be like, you know what, I'm gonna have Prod next turn. Uh, you either wildfire me off of it, and then I get to hard cast some Molnir for, um, unless you have, like, an untapped land, but it's, it's kind of their choice to whatever they want the outcome to be. I'm gonna play in this land, and then here I think I'm just going to, uh, a Molnir for me, because I don't really care if it lives, it's not really that important, so. Yeah, they, they can counter spell it, uh, that is fine by me. And then here, I will just hard cast the other one now, and get it in play, and so it's like, you know, they want to waste, like, a bolt on it or something, they can do that. Um, and then... Yeah, we have an ephemerate, we have a, uh, prohibit. I'm hoping they go after the power plant, because that's the last one we played. So, maybe they think that killing that is of some value, and then we just follow it up with another one, but... Yeah, one of the things you have to be careful about in this matchup is trying to not play basics because they're gonna wildfire you and you want, hopefully don't want to just have it be a two mana stone rain. Um, that's pretty bad. Especially when it draws them hard. So, you know, that's that's kind of the, the tricky part here. But um looks like we haven't gotten stone rain just yet, so we're we're not out of it yet. So they're gonna late in their monifer. That's fine. Um I would ephemerate mine, but I think that's a mistake. Because I'll just kill it and then I'll use ephemerate grammar, so Let's avoid that. Um, and then I'll heart cast a Lorien here. And then I will probably just play a mnemonic wall. Grab a hmm. I want brainstorm or another impulse. I think honestly I just want to grab a Lorien. It's just like a draw three, and it's like you know, okay, and they're off it, they're insane, just, I probably have too much going on, and, yeah, I have too much mana, they didn't draw wildfire, and I'm, yeah, okay. Well, very lucky to win M1, uh, when you lose M1, typically you lose the match, in my experience, um, but yeah, we, we draw it pretty well, um, so, can't complain. Uh, Moment's Peace is, generally speaking, pretty bad in the matchup, not really something I want. Um, this is the matchup where you are sad to not have four Pyroblast, but, you know, I think you have to make sacrifices for worse matchups, so it is what it is. I think Breath Weapon is actually capable because of the fact that Breath Weapon, um, deals with the, mist, the Murmuring Mystic, so you don't just get steamrolled by it. 
um, which is important. And also, it can heal our Aoman for some bonus for some stuff like that. So there's some value there. Uh, and then other than that, um, I think. Hmm. You could have like a one, like a one of high or last, but then I'm not sure what's the hunt for it. Um. Yeah, I'm not sure what's the hunt for it. So I think probably I'm just gonna say since you won and then go for it. You heard born in ancient right for relic. That's also not unreasonable. Maybe you just hunt the wet the the weather the storm. Is that hurt is so bad? Um. Yeah, I probably should just hunt weather. And then bring in the blast and like a run and say whenever I'm at 81 or 61, I mean. A little bit embarrassing to me at 61 like that, but it is what it is. You haven't eaten this hand because we have brainstorm, so we have a way to um, maybe profit off of their land destruction. I'm going to put this on red, green or red. Probably red, I think. That hunt that fire, but I think having higher blast is probably more valuable. The other nice part, too, is that, um, you have the option to brainstorm away to shoot mod, which is not worth nothing. So, here's an Elorian. Okay, well, draw the trap rotation, it punish, it happens. Um, here I think I'm just gonna not brainstorm yet. Like, you could fire it off, but why, is my question. Like, what am I looking for? Um, I have land drops. I, I'm not in the game where, I'm not at a point in the game where I'm, like, looking for anything specific. Uh, I, I just don't really see the point, so, um, yeah, I'm just gonna, you know, hit my land drops and just chill, I guess, so. I, I don't really think there's anything wrong with, with, with this play, so we'll, we'll go with this. Um, hopefully they miss lands, and then I can just, like, start going land, or land, or land, or, and, and maybe overwhelm them, but, you know, they have wildfires for their own lands that we can be in trouble. Well, okay. So uh, here I'm just going to land now. I'm just not going to run into counter magic. I'm not going to give anything like that. They might have an ephemerate, but it doesn't look like they do. And it certainly wouldn't get them a land. It would get them maybe a hand trip, which can find them a land. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not making a move here. I don't need to. If they want to earn it this turn, they can earn it this turn. Well, they're going to wildfire their own land. That makes sense. So now I think I might brainstorm on the end set here looking for something. Uh, or they just brainstorm on their own turn. Okay. Um, they probably drew the brains from up the wildfire, but I also don't necessarily understand the decision here to do it this way. But that's fine. Uh, oh, they're looking for a land drop, maybe. Okay, that makes sense, that makes sense. Okay, so I'm going to brainstorm here, trying to find something. We found double tower. Um, okay, so unfortunately we need to draw a shuffle of that, which is what we were more so looking for. Um, uh, but maybe our opponent will be kind enough to give us one. Um... I probably shouldn't have put away the tower. I probably shouldn't put away the ball now that I think about it. Um, I think I'm still gonna just play the tower out. I'm, I'm hoping this incentivizes them to blow it up, but I might have sh probably shouldn't have done that differently. Maybe put away the breath weapon. But yeah, they're gonna blow up the tower. This is fine. I'm appreciative of them giving me a shot with effect. So. You know, but I, I definitely should have put the second tower, so I would not have lost round. So that was a little bit of a punt on on my part, but um, it, it is what it is. So oh, they're in a oh no, they're gonna get the cleansing wildfire mat. I think yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, uh, let's brainstorm again. You're eating fine. Okay, don't really want rolling thunder. I don't think I need the breath weapon. Um, I will cycle Lorien for, I think, a Greenland. And then, I honestly think I'm supposed to kill the Aeomancer now. That might be wrong, but I can't really cast Double Pirate Blast anyways, and this also cuts off uh, possible Ephemerate lines from them, so it does open me up to like, late to dinner, but fuck it, you know, that's kind of my mentality. Um, yeah, so, they're gonna, yeah, they're gonna just try to shut me up around now, which, I, I've, I've had this happen before, but I'm hoping that I can bot away the two Lenten Wildfires, so it means that they have to do a third one, which is not as likely, and, um, you know, I still have some outs at least, so, actually, I probably should not have done it this way, I should have played the wall first, as that would have gobbled up some counter spells, so this might have been a mistake. Um, 
Yeah, that one's probably a mistake. That's probably a mistake. Uh, I'm just gonna do nothing then. I'm gonna impulse and fight on their turn. But, yeah, probably, if I was under playing the wall there, I probably shouldn't play that pre bot because if they counter it, I can hit the counters at Silent as well, so they have less things to, to hit back with future uh, Art Hero Man. So some little mistakes like that are going to definitely add up. Um, but, uh, you know, Yanu, Yanu. You play a Fjord, okay. And then I'm just going to, to Impulse here. Here we find. They want to counter this, I'm going to let it happen. Yep, sign. And then here I'm going to go one, two, three. Pulse at a tower. See it here. They want to fight over this. Um, I think that Pyro Bat. Just to, uh, you know, get a land wrap. But this are definitely, definitely, you know, poorly. But I think you have to make them have it, right? So. They're in a Hydra. Okay, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. So next turn I have a wall to get back a pulse. We'll see what happens from there. But we are out of counters. And I also wish I held the bot. Because I could have on all their counters. And I think we would have been better off that way. But if they have another hero man for here. Then we're in a little bit of trouble. So, you know. Sequencing, sequencing matters a lot. It matters quite a bit, I might say. But, uh... You know, we'll see what happens. So, yeah, I'm just gonna play a wall here and, and see what happens. They probably just counter it, but, um, what's this? Oh, they're gonna lose start this? Ah, uh, yeah, they're gonna lose start this. Sure, 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 sure. I don't know why they tapped now for it, but sure. I mean, that makes sense. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I guess there's no reason not to, I guess. That's maybe the argument, but... Yeah. I, I just feel a lot more comfortable if they lost all these counters, is what I'm trying to say. Because they stopped it in our hero man, so like, they just get back into it. So now it's like, I need them to not have another counter, or an... Okay, Mermaid Mist is fine. Um, they're at three cards now. So, okay, I drew another land. I think here I'm actually just half tempted to... Made out the land destruction with a uh or counter spell with a crop rotation because so I don't care if this resolves. Um Okay, so I need another flower here. And then I'm gonna go one, two, and just play wall. And they counter it, they counter it. You know? Okay, they countered it. So I have one wall left in my deck. Um, which is unfortunate because it means now that if they have enough counters to hit the wall, I'm I'm screwed. So yeah, it's not looking great for me, but I do have cards like Brainstorm, Impulse, Lorien Revealed, Mold Ripper to like get me back into it, but we're definitely running on empty here, uh, that's for sure. Prohibit. Well, that would have been nice last turn, but, uh, you know, you can't get everything. I also think we're just dead on board by my calculations, so. We'll let, we'll let them kill us, and then we'll go to the next game, but, yeah. Maybe I should have held, I don't know. I think you're supposed to keep jamming here, but they just had five counters, so. Yeah, that's not something hard, it's like... You know, sometimes they just have all the counters, and you flood out a little bit, but uh, I, I don't think we need anything to run. I, I think we, we played this pretty well overall. Uh, yeah, they just, they just had a lot of counters, they had a decent amount of pressure, and, and they got us, so. Yeah, I think we, think we run it back here, and try to, try to tighten up for the next game. All right. So here... Uh, I don't think I can eat this hand, it's not great. Okay, I'll eat this hand. And I'll probably bottom the breath weapon, because it's not what I need. And then here I'm just going to tower, and I'm probably going to fight a Lorien for a, um, a dual land, and not a Mesa, because, you know, once again they have wildfires and stuff. I'm going to just cycle this now. Um, you could hold it, but I think I'm going to want to cycle anyway, so. I'm going to get the falls, I think. That might be wrong, but, uh, I think just, you know, you need the green source out for pulse is maybe more important, but it hurt his blow up my tower here. Nope, they're blowing up their land first, okay. So, I get to mold it for at least, so I'm pretty happy about that. I'm definitely going to vote it here, there's no reason not to. Uh, we just want to eat right cards and we need our land drops, but, uh, 
yeah, it's definitely a little spooky. But, uh, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. Um, hopefully, I can hit what I'm looking for. But time will tell. If it blow up my tower here, I'm actually, like, cool with that. Can I blow up my tower? Or yet another land? Nope, they're yet another land. Okay. I am okay with that. Uh, unless I have an Aeromancer, then I'm scared. Uh, let's see. I draw a power plant or a mine. We're in good shape, but we miss it, so... I'm just gonna remote the other motive for here. I'm trying to hide in the tower if I can afford to do so. Okay, I'll play the Fjord. That's a pretty good one. Yeah, I want to hide in the tower because normally they blow up the tower. Like, that's like the default bit for most people, so... But yeah, uh, we're, we're in not the worst shape. Like, we have two counter spells up. We have a hard they might want to counter. It's not the worst. Okay, I'm gonna play this. Probably also naming red. Just so I can have multiple pyros up. I'm probably gonna go EOT teachings on their turn because I'm fine if they counter it. Like, it's not a hard I'm that important. It doesn't, doesn't, it's not that important. And I'm also, like, fine just making trades like that. So, um,. He seems not hard that I'm I'm very fine to have eight counters from the opponent because it's not the most important card. So here if I grab anything, okay, they're just gonna buy it. That's fine. And if I didn't grab anything, it was probably going to be like another pyro or a dispel, but now we just don't have to decide. Lorian revealed. Um, yeah, I'm probably just gonna gonna hard cast this with pyro blast backup. I, I don't. I'm, I'm like a little sad at the counter it, but also it's like, can I really say it's that unexpected? Probably not. Uh, they're gonna, they're gonna counter spell. I'm going to pyro because I think I'm supposed to pyro, or maybe I just don't care. Hmm. Yeah, I'll just let it go, whatever. It's fine. Yeah, like that might be wrong, but I don't know. Like, I just think Pyroblast countering our Aeromancer is maybe more important given the, the sites, so. I need another land. If five cards in hand. Uh, okay. I'm fine where we're at. Running in a red blast is a little unfortunate, but it doesn't stop Pulse of Marasa, so I'm, uh, I'm okay with this trade. Land. Ooh, the mine. That's a pretty good one. Uh, let's go one, two, Pulse of Monifer and see what they do. They let it go. Uh,. I think here, I'm just going to remote it and let it eat the Pyroblast. <laughs> Some has to eat the Pyroblast. Maybe I'm supposed to fight. Maybe I'm supposed to fight. Yeah, I'll, I'll fight. I'll fight. For him, it's going to be used at some point. I am kind of tapping low here, but I'm also like, okay, I want to waste another counter spell. Okay. So, yeah, we got Honestly, like, if I can draw anything here, I would just love to top net for you about it. I think I would close out this game if I can just hit a bomb before they are for me. So, yeah, they just a hard to ask Lorian. That's really bad. Now they, they brought in the game wide open, and then they brainstorm. Like, you can see the power of Lorian and brainstorm. Like, I, I think it's just required. But, yeah, maybe I was supposed to just let that go. I, I don't know. They're gonna wildfire me, yeah. And I lost Fran, RIP. Um, but I get a land at least, so it's not the end of the world. Um, yeah, here I'm really, really tempted. If it's just like, hmm, I'm gonna brainstorm, I think. Okay, ooh, I hit crop. That's a, that's a powerful one. So I probably put that the right and the wall, I'm thinking. This is not what I need. And then I'm going to crop. So now I just like I I got the brainstorm shuffle, and now I just go hmm. I need to make some chats real quick. So if I if I get the mine, it's probably correct. And then I can go enter here with Ratner. 
Ha. Huh. Maybe I, this is tough. If I'm definitely playing with fire here with what I'm doing. But I I oh that was really good. Okay, okay. I don't think I'm supposed to play the wall here. You wanna make that argument? Oh wow, they conceded? Are you excuse me? Wow. Okay. Okay, okay. Uh their hand must have been terrible, but like I mean look. <laughs> what happened, right? They brainstormed a DeLorean, and I felt behind, and then what did I do back? I brainstormed a DeLorean, so, you know. There was the show, like, those two cards are really powerful, and, like, you saw how that, that turn, I was, like, looking kind of in trouble, and then by the end of it, not only did I get Tron back, but I also just got Mnemonic Wall with Triple Counter back, and I'm like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> like, regular Tron couldn't do that, you know? So... I think, if anything, that shows the power of Brainstorm in Tron. And we're 3-1, right? And I also reviewed the footage of the first map, so I, I thought about it more. I think I might have been able to, to eat out Game 3 if I played a little bit differently, but hindsight's 2020. But we might have been 4-1, or 4 oh, excuse me, if I played better. But, hey, we're positive. We're in at least 3-2 the lead, which I'm very okay with. I, I don't have very high standards anymore, but this lead is mainly about showing out the power uh, brainstorm and Lorien revealed, and uh, I think we've done that. Like I think we've shown how good this is, and like no, I think this is a great example. Like this turn right here, like it was looking kind of bad, and then brainstorm, crop rotation, Lorien, and like awesome. You know what I'm saying? Like now we're back in it. We have Tron, we have triple counter up, we have Nemonic Wall, we have the teachings in the graveyard. Like it's looking awesome, you know. So um, I don't know what their hand was. Maybe their hand was just all garbage, but. It felt like an early concession, but still, like, incredible, incredible, like, I, Brainstorm has just felt awesome, like, I, I think it's made Tron a deck that has, like, some pretty high highs and some pretty high, like, low lows, and it has very, kind of, smoothed everything out, so, I'm, uh, I'm lighting in a lot, and, uh, yeah, let's see y'all in match number five. All right, so you're back for the fifth and final match. Unfortunately, this is not a heap. It's a little too risky for me. This is better. Um, the problem is, like, I don't know what I'm supposed to bottom here. Like, I'm gonna bottom teachings because depending on the matchup, any of these other cards can be incredible. So, it's a little tough because, um, Breath Weapon can be a stinker, or Weather can be a stinker, but you don't know. So, and also, like, depending on the matchup, you might need one immediately versus the other. So, it's, it's hard to say, really. Um, but I think that regardless of the outcome, uh, bottoming a four drop is not the worst. Like I tend to, one of the things I tend to like consider when mulliganing is, um, you know, like heap the heap spells. Okay, so this could be anything. This could be anything. It's probably gardens, but on the up hands, it's something weird like mono black burn. I'm just gonna. Take the rim word falls and play it slow. It also means that crop rotation in the future is really good. So, yeah, I think that's the safe play. Um. Oh, okay. So it is. Oh, it's the dread matchup. Okay. 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 So yeah. Um, crop rotation is very good in the matchup, but for a different reason. So we'll see if we can beat dread. But I'm very glad I have breath breath weapon, and I'm very glad I have weather in this form. So. Um, both those are, are pretty good for me, I'll think, so I'm centered. Well, speaking of the devil, we found the crop rotation, but I'm on an impulse trying to find a land here. Uh, we found a tower, and that's easily, easily the take here. Um, so now the real question is, do you, like, use the crop rotation perhaps to find Tron, or do you hold it back as, like, a measure of uh, effect? Uh, and, and that really boils down to, uh, what you expect the game to play out to, right? In this specific circumstance, what I might be playing to is trying to get my opponent to extend to the board, and then I either force them to Dread Return, and then I can crop into Baugh and just get them, uh, which I think I might do, right? Because if you can Breath Weapon exile their board, it puts them in a really tough spot. So here they might Dread Return the Giant, which, yeah, that would be a pretty bad thing for me, unfortunately. I, I did have to tap out on the crop rotation, but uh, it wouldn't be for that much. It would be for, like, three? So... Not the best. I, you know, I'm me for five. 
Okay, so I actually might be pretty good, and then we're, we're dealing with the flip side for the rest of the game, so if they do it now, we might be in trouble, but they're waiting, which makes sense, because it's not the best, but also, I'm glad they waited, because that would have been pretty bad. Okay, so, in terms of what we do now, I think it's very easily just play energy refractor, and then draw it hard, because I can't afford to do anything else, like, you could wait an impulse, but I might have to, you know, do something a little bit different here, so... I'm gonna put this on red because I want to be able to breath weapon and crop rotation on the same turn if needed. Um, but yeah, here I'm just gonna play it slow, play it patiently, take four, start buying in my time, doing what I have to do. But the fact that I have crop rotation in a bot, it just means that I'm like way less scared. Because I'm fine if they just want to like keep, keep milling and, and it's sending and it's sending and it's sending and it's sending and like go for it, you know? Um, not, not, gonna, not gonna bother me, you know? Not gonna bother me. Um, they can acorn harvest, but once again, that gets eaten up by the breath weapon, so I'm really just not that scared of um, the board. Like, if they dread return, I have the answer. If they don't dread return, I have the answer next turn. So, I'm fine if they want to over it send. I'm, I'm very much okay if they want to over it send. They're gonna dread five here. Honestly, I'm just hoping they pass. They probably won't, though, but. It would be great if they did. So, if we have to buy, I think I have to get rid of the, the red land. If I can still breath weapon next turn. Okay, so they're sending. That's fine. I will now crop rotation. And be like, nope, you lose everything. Mostly everything. Um. But yeah, we're gonna get the buy. We're gonna say no thank you. And now they lost their entire yard and the dread return. And we're doing pretty good. We're looking pretty peachy, one might say. Uh here, let's see what we draw. Hope we didn't draw land. We did not draw land. Um there's a little bit of a risk here and we might miss on the impulse. But okay, we hit a brainstorm, that's interesting. Hmm. On the one hand, I want to land. On the other hand, I like brainstorm a lot. This might be rainy. This might be rainy. But I'm actually, maybe I wait a third on the brainstorm because, like, I'm not in any immediate danger. Like, they don't have a yard. They're going to hit me for four. I have weather the swarm up. I have prohibit up. Like, yeah, I think not brainstorming is probably correct because I think if I do brainstorm, I'm over ascending. So, I don't, uh, not over ascending, more so, I'm just you mess up the opportunity to get brainstorm a lot, and there's no reason to do that. So, here they are trying to rebuild, but how, what did I get rid of? Like, I, had a, I got rid of a dread return, a dread return, and one giant, and now they're just gonna start hard casting to the board, that makes sense. Okay, so now I can afford to brainstorm as I have a Lorien revealed, so let's go do that right now. And, okay, I definitely don't want a Rolling Thunder, not really in the market for that one. Prohibit is probably also not what I'm in the market for in the matchup. It is not a terrible card. Well, actually, it does counter Dread Return, so maybe I do want that. Um, I just really want the Refractor, but yeah, man, I only have one, so it's probably actually the rest of just get rid of the second one. It's a little bit sad, though, because I wish I didn't have to do it, but yeah, you know what you do. You know, I'm going to probably just get an Island because I want to have uh, Moments piece up and also Weather the Storm. Um, probably not gonna matter that much, but, yeah, I, I don't think there's any harm. Okay, so they have Dread Return, but that's about it. Uh, the Heart has the Imp, I'm definitely not gonna wipe the board until I draw, like, a Ghostly Flit or Effect. Um, so here they're in a swing, and I think I'm incentivized to Moment Space here. It's not lethal, but... I don't want, like, a random Dread Return to, like, destroy me here. It's pretty minor, but I, I think just staying at 10 isn't useful because I might have to, like, weather up to, like, not die to, like, a, a random Dread Return, so... Yeah, it's, it's it's very minuscule, but it could matter, in theory. Okay, so I think this is all the Dread Returns. Okay. Over here, we have another tower. We're kind of in trouble, a little bit, because 
I haven't found Tron, and I'm kind of running out of engines. So, maybe I was not most of the moments he's there, but hard to say. Um, yeah, they didn't get the troll mat. I was feeling pretty okay, but, you know, I needed to so typically you need to, like, close the door once you do it, and I, I just couldn't close it, so. I found a mine there. I'm feeling a lot better, but, um, yeah, this is technically lethal, so I'm going to flash this bat. And I'm going to hope that they let me maybe get away with the weather this time, but we'll have to wait and see. I'm really hoping to draw, like, a Ursi Flicker, honestly. Because then I can just Breath Weapon, and... Me or, hey, I'm also hoping they play more spells here. That would also be a welcome thing. For a month, this is fine. I guess they have another Dread Return into a giant that might get me. But this is why we're holding up the Weather of the Storm. Okay, they missed. They're at 12 cards in net, notably. So, pretty low. I'm actually probably going to weather here, regardless, because, um, want to, want to stay on a range. I also maybe could be counting how many creatures they have, because that's probably an important metric to keep track of. Honestly, I'm kind of sad that I bottom the teachings over the weather, but like, yeah, I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty. I thought it was good at first, but now it's like, huh, it might not have mattered. But I don't know, it's like the matchup where you need Breath Weapon, you really need Breath Weapon, so. Um, how do it have 22? Well, that's not great. Um, so, uh, I think, um, what is this? Oh, yeah, I don't care about Nah. It can be at a million for all I care. It doesn't really matter. That's not the game we're playing anymore. So, if they swing, I. Hmm. Well, all the red returns are in the yard. So, actually, maybe what I'm supposed to do is just be like. Actually, no. No, no, no. I, I knew this. This is fine. This is fine. This is fine. I'll just rather have it now. Just wipe the board. It puts the imp in the yard, and I'm sorry, Dread King, but I'll have him up for the Dread Return. And it can't really get enough things in play unless they, like, go all in for one turn. And I'm okay taking the damage here, I think. Like, I just don't want to waste the moment's piece, so they can just hit me twice, and yeah. I, I think I'm supposed to say that is the thing. But 13, I mean, they have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah, it's not lethal not lethal it's it's close but it's it's not lethal Let's see what we draw here island well i am definitely flooding maybe i'm supposed to be holding that brainstorm but i, I just think that like i might need all the man i can get so i'm just hoping they go all in on like a dread return and it just happens but yeah, I, I've been flooding here a little bit. Like, if I drew teachings, I think this is easy, but it's not. It's actually pretty hard. So. Okay, they're milling. They have six cards left, and the giant and a dread return. They also have eight more harvest. Um. I think. I'm supposed to wait here and just take it. It's not lethal. But this hurt that fire. They're gonna harvest, sure, 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 sure. And then they're gonna probably dread return here. And then one, two, three, four. Cast with hitter. I wish this told me how many cards I had. But it doesn't. So here I'm trying to hit what draws save me. It's probably litter or missile teachings. That's probably it. Yeah. Litter is probably the one card that saves me here. Okay, okay, brainstorm. Here we hit. Uh, darn. Darn, darn, darn. So. 
on the one hand, maybe I wasn't supposed to play the moment's piece. On the other hand, maybe I wasn't. So this Lorien has nothing to grab because I've gotten all the guitar hits out of my net, and I also just drew a lot of them. I knew three of them in a row, I think. Um... Problem? Well, actually, let me hit. And they saw that high. Yeah, I have another dread return. Yeah. So. Hmm. Oh uh, yeah, this is actually terrible because I can't even shuffle and have anything. So. Wow. Uh. It literally has to be like... Hmm. Yeah, maybe I wasn't supposed to hold the island. Maybe I wasn't supposed to hold the island. Because when I held the island, I heard it put the island mat and like a power plant and then shuffle and then yeah, a free brainstorm and then maybe I can find something else, but that's not an option now. So, what's the play? It's certainly not shuffle with Lorien. It could be brainstorm a certain time and just see what happens. The problem is, if I had moments piece, I think I have, like, hmm, yeah. I just, mm, I just missed a little too hard here in these last couple of turns. I think had I hit a teaching for a moment or any amount of action to keep cards flowing, um, it might have been closer, but I kind of fumbled a little bit. So, I'm trying to think here what the play is. It might just, so, yeah, it might just be brainstorming again and just ray. Yeah, brainstorm again. Yeah, that's not gonna do it. That's not gonna do it. Um. Yeah, I think we are just deterministically dead. Um. I'll pass the turn, but I think we're dead. If I drew it for him in there also, I think that also saves me. But, yeah, I guess I have two outs there. I have him and Flitter now that I look at it. But, yeah, I mean. Hmm. I think I might have punched on this. I think I might have punched on this, so. I, uh. Yeah, I think they're just gonna play it right here and dread return and make me have it. But I will not have it, and that will be that. If for some reason they decide not to go for it, you know, they should go for it. Okay, let's see how much it is. Yep. Yeah, they just went for it, and I do not have the answer. Uh, alright, me. Alright, me. If I did, like, yeah, I mean, I was supposed to see, like, maybe a wall, and... Yeah, that was just, mmm, that was really close. I feel like I might have misplayed that, but I don't know where the mistake was. I don't know where the mistake was. In terms of how I sideboard, I think Rolling Thunder is not necessary. And I think the real game plan is, um... They also are an Ancient Red Net, notably, but... Um... I don't think I want to have cards for that. So, post-born, they have Rotten Reunion and, like, Ancient Red, and that's about it. So, they can't blow up the Refractors, but that's not that important. I mean, it is, but it also isn't. It's just a metal on the hand. Like, we were probably gonna win that last game without a single refractor, like, it was fine, but, um, we also just didn't find anything, so, there is that. Um, yeah, I think two Brent weapons is fine. I, they're not a relic net or a spell bomb net. Yeah, I think you just run about like this.
Oh, hey. Um, I will eat this. And health issues, but I think he'll the refractory might just die. So there's some downsides to it, but I think having double prohibit breath weapon is worth keeping. But yeah, losing game one is definitely brutal because then you have to meet the post board game for they have really good sideboard cards. So realistically you really just wanna win game one. And we failed to do that, so this might be a loss, unfortunately. I mean, we're not going to count ourselves out just yet, but it's it's going to be more difficult than it would be otherwise. And they have to rest here. That's also just incredibly bad. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what, what happens. So here I'm just going to play Refractor. Pass. Okay, another Refractor makes this less painful. They get a red source here. It probably means they have Grunt. No, this is in a swab. Okay. Um, yeah, so now I'm just going to play the other refract. Oh, they're going to do this line. Okay. Yeah, this is definitely a play. I mean, it's fine. We keep in the moment. He says we're not going to notice anytime soon. Um, yeah, another breath weapon. Not looking so good. But that's okay. I'll put this into play. Name green. And we'll pass. Yeah, I don't think we need a breath weapon just yet, but. Uh. We're gonna get Titan some damage, but this is also not that scary, like, yeah, you hit me, but we have time. Realistically, like, we're not really trying to play to the out of, like, we can survive one giant, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're not really about that, we're more so about, like, making sure it never happens and then locking them out. So. Lorian is not the worst. Hmm. I think I'm gonna cycle it just to ensure I have a land drop for next turn. I am tapping out and I'm gonna take a decent shot of damage here, but um I, th I think this is okay. We're gonna have to start fighting anyways, so it is what it is, but yeah. We're gonna, yeah, they're gonna cite all the shunners, and I'm concerned that they get the red one, like the sight, yeah, uh, they did. Okay, so ain't hit red on me in our future. Well, spooky. Eight chains as well. Not the worst, but I also really need Thrawn, and I'm kind of drawing really awkwardly. Once again, this, I think, is a prime example of how hard, like, brainstorm hurt me used to, to great effect. Um, but that is probably not happening if I don't draw Thrawn. I do draw Thrawn, then this game breaks wide open. But I don't have it, so we're looking at a very different game here. Rotten Reunion would also get me here, which is also another reason why this tends to be a little bit difficult. Like, they run to me, force me to counter, and then they rot in reunion, and I'm in trouble, like, I have to rip. Here, I'm actually going to counter this. It's not great for me, but my rationale is that, like, I kind of need these in play, and so I'm fine that they kill one, but I can't really let them kill the other. Rot in reunion, though, wouldn't be that right in here, I'll admit that. Um, but I have to use my mana some way. So, this is how I do that. Another refractor, well... That makes me less scared about some cards, but more scared about others. I'm gonna have some moment piece here, but I really do need to hit a land here. I need to hit a tower, crop rotation, anything. Okay, I hit a land, we're still playing. Uh, hopefully they don't have Rotten Reunion. But the other problem is the fact that, like, they might be able to giant us randomly, so... That's a little spooky. No Reunion, okay. And then, yeah, we're, just, we're back to the whole, you know, uh, moment piece here, and then hope we don't die. Game plan, so I have moments beast, I say no damage, and then we'll see what they have. Um rap rotation or tower up the top would be great at stabilizing the board here. Oh yeah, okay, we're dead actually. They might just kill us here. They have one, two. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They have, they have a lot. They have one, two, three, four. Oh, yikes. 
Yikes, yikes, yikes. So, I'm gonna brainstorm here because I'm kind of forced into it. Okay, but, but helps, but uh, it's not enough. It's just not enough. Um. Yeah, like, we're, we're still a minute short. So. Yeah, they just, they just run with her when we die. I needed to hit, like, crop rotation and tower. Something like that. Um. Honestly, even just a tower might have done it, but. Yeah, unfortunately, our draws are not coming together here. So. Hmm. Yeah, like, the fast troll start was, was tough. If I, um, hmm. Maybe I could have countered it, I'm not sure. I had an island, maybe, but. That, uh. Would have played differently. Like, if they didn't have the troll here, I'd be fine. But if they had the troll, I'd be just, like, crumbling. So. Maybe what I'm supposed to do is put back the island, put back a redundant breath weapon, and then, you know, one, two, impulse, pray to hit moments, please. Oh, we missed. Yeah, we're dead. I, I don't see a way out here. Um, we're just gonna die to the board, and yeah, we can fall. Oh, yep, yep, they got us, they got us. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that was, was an interesting game. Um, I definitely think that's a good matchup, like, I, I've beaten it more than i lost to it, but, yeah, I mean, sometimes the net just fails to cooperate, but, I mean, hey, can't complain about a 3-2, I think our losses were close, and I think had I played maybe a little bit differently, made some different decisions, maybe we could have won those games, so, you know, that's the thing about Thrawn, he has to play pretty tight, but I'll see y'all in the wrap-up. I think it was a very good show of Brainstorm, I think, you know, I might have been able to play things a little bit differently, kind of maybe improve the outcome, but, like, I think in terms of, like, the brainstorm hard, like, it was awesome. Um, we saw a number of spots where I was starting to be a little concerned in a little bit of a rough spot, and then I just, you know, brainstormed my way to victory, and I won, you know, and it was just like, wow, like, this art is awesome. Um, we played against, I would say, four pretty favorable matchups. Uh, we lost two, uh, two, and we won three, but, you know, I think that performed well. Um, there's, like, minor things you can change, so, you could modify, maybe, the mana base, you could modify, um, certain spells that I'm playing, but, I think my opinion of Tron is that you don't want to be cutesy, like, you shouldn't be playing Tron with the idea of, you know, I want to play a cutesy Tron net and have all these cool one ofs and, you know, I'm going to play my one of in Roma Horror, and then my one of Meteor, and then my one of this, and, like, I don't think that's where you should be, because the problem is that when you draw the wrong one of at the wrong time, there's nothing you can do to, to remedy that. And I think I'm playing about as few one ofs as you possibly can. Like, I have my one of Ephemerate, which I think is fine. I have my one of Weather the Storm when you need to gain life. I have the one of Ghostly Flicker. Uh, I have the one of Breath Weapon, the one of Pulse Marasa. Like, my one of count is pretty low. And I don't think Tron can function uh, without these cards. Like, you kind of have to play them. So, I'm really trying to minimize it. And even then, like, we saw there were a number of spots where. Um, I drew it hard, and I was like, I don't really need this, I don't really need this hard right now, and it got kind of awkward, so, you know, it, it's just one of those things where, if you draw the wrong card at the wrong time, and you have no way to put it back, that's a serious problem, um, because you can't really afford to stumble, is the reality, like, you look at a lot of formats, like Modern, like the City Vintage, and, They've all gotten, over the years, I think, more brutal. Like, you have less opportunities to stumble. Because when you do stumble, you can get punished really hard. Right? The cards have gotten more powerful, and the games are a lot more intense. And so, because of that, 
when you do stumble, the tempo loss can be so dramatic that you're just so far behind that you die, you know? Um, and that's why I play cards like crop rotation, because I think crop rotation, you know, kind of helps you, because, like, you can stumble a little bit, and then you crop rotation into Kron, and all of a sudden, like, you're back online, right? Whereas, like, I think a hard, like, expedition map doesn't do that. It doesn't help you hatch up. It's so slow, and I think map is a card that makes Tron worse. Like, I think there were a number of spots that we, we played where we you have to see the power of crop rotation. Like, it gave us extra mana, it let us not fall behind, and I think that map would not have done that. I also think that Brainstorm is great, because you have all these one ofs sometimes you don't need them right now, and before you had Brainstorm, you just were stuck with it. Whereas now, you draw it, and you can put it back, right? And so it's just like a little bit of tempo that you gain from that, and also the consistency, is really, really important. Now, is this list perfect? Probably not. Maybe there are things you can change. I'm not an expert on the format. Like, I used to be really good at Popper, but I haven't played Popper in quite some time. I, I play it maybe once a month or so, but um, I haven't played it nearly as much as I used to. And that's mainly due to life commitments and just other things. So I, just, I, I don't have the luxury like I used to. But that's okay. The point is that when it comes to kind of this list, and the idea that I was going for, I think this lead was a successful showcase on that, regardless of the result. And I think 3 is fine. Like, 3 is fairly reasonable for Tron. I, I don't really expect to, like, sign every time. It's not a tier 1 net like it used to be. I think, really, the format is, like, kind of at a spot where any net can, can sign out. Um, if it's, like, uh, one of the top nets where it's playing a decent engine, you know, like, Terror in 5 out, Guardians in 5 out, um, Linners in 5 out, Burnt in 5 out, etc, etc. Even Trot in 5 out. Um, you just have to be playing a certain subset of cards that are good, and then are impactful, and so, you know, I think the format is definitely, you know, not broken like it used to be with the Modern Horizons cards and, and all that. But, still, like, I think when you are building Tron, you have to try to figure out how you can optimize it, how you can make it better, and I think Brainstorm is a step in the right direction. It also does make me feel like Brainstorm and Loin Revealed are cards that you should just be playing in every blue net. Um, that might be a little extreme, but I think that Brainstorm is a card that continues to get better, and Loin Revealed is a card that works so well with it. Early on, it can be a shuffle effect, which is great. And then later in the game, it can just be a draw three, which is also great. And I think in, in a net like Tron, you can utilize both really well. Um, and I think Tron has, like, needed a way to kind of smooth out the draws. I think a really good analogy of what I'm trying to eat across is, like, when you look at Legacy, a lot of nets can play, like, Silver Bullet one ofs right? And it's because they play cards like Brainstorm and cards like Ponder, right? Because with Brainstorm, Let's say you draw a card that's like a silver bullet one or whatever, and it's not run in the matchup. You can brainstorm it away. You can say, okay, it goes away, and I'm going to fetch, you know, play my fetch land, shuffle, and I'm not really punished, right? Like, that's a luxury that you have, you know, because of brainstorm. And I think that with a net like Tron, with all these one that you ha that you have, you should try to be utilizing the card. I think in the past, you couldn't really afford to play Brainstorm because you didn't have a card like Loyan Revealed. I think cards like Ash Barons were not good enough because it is a colorless land, and you also ha then have to be playing a lot of basics, and Tron is a net that historically doesn't want to play a ton of basics because you're a multi-colored net, and playing a lot of basics, um, is rough, because you want your lands to sap for multiple mana, so, when they only sap for one color of mana, um, you know, it's, it's not right, right, you want them to either sap for a ton of mana, or multiple colors, and Mesa's do neither, so, kind of at odds, but Lorien, combined with the fact that we now have the dual lands, means that it's pretty free to play a hard light brainstorm, I think, and, um, yeah, it, it just feels great, so, 
that's kind of my takeaway from this leak. Um, I think Tron performed well. I think I played reasonably well. And I think I've shown the power of Brainstorm and Lorien. I think more Mordet should be playing it. More Mordet should be looking into it. And, you know, it's not crazy. Like, yeah, people know Brainstorm's good and Council Effects are good, but like, I don't know. I think every, every Blue Net should probably be playing for Brainstorm for Lorien. Um, that might be a strong opinion. I mean, I guess if you have more shuffle effects, you don't have to play the four Lorien, but I think you should probably still play both. Maybe you don't need all four, but you should play both. Um, but still, I think I think Brainstorm right now is arguably the best hand trip in the format. I don't think it's close. Like, there's just so many spots where, like, you know, a draw three is way better than a preordain, you know? Um... And I think it's it's been a lot of time coming. It's for the longest time preordained with the best cantrip, but you know, the format's gotten more powerful, we've gotten more shuttle effects, like I think it's just brainstorm. I think it's just brainstorm. I don't think it's close. I think you should be playing four. Um I think fam should probably be playing for brainstorm for Lorian. Um yeah, I think every net should just play that Matt each and I, I think it's time for Tron to play Fort Brainstorm. I really do. Which is a wild state for me. But I think this lead was a pretty good showcase of why you would play such a card. Um, yeah. Uh, that's all I really have to say. Um, if you made it this far, um, thank you for watching. And uh, see y'all next time.